Yo guys, what is going on here? It is your boy for Land and Under, Demo Number 9. And I am here for the LDL D-Max draft recap. But I am not alone. I am joined by a new coach in the league. Uh, and that new coach, him and I have faced off before. It was an ugly battle. I unfortunately came out the loss. So he currently has the hierarchy over me at the moment. But I am joined by no other than Absolute. How's it going, everyone? This is your boy, Absolute, and I am the coach of the Seattle Dragonairs. And yes, I was able to beat Jet in our uh, first battle together over in the uh, PCL. And uh, hopefully we can do it again. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think so, because I don't know if you remember, but I made the 10-1 and 1 promise this season. So oh, I remember. How that goes. And I can't wait to prove it wrong. <laughs> But with that being said, guys, uh, without further ado, let's get into this because it's going to be a long battle. We have to we, we have to get through ten coaches, twelve picks each. So all in all, that is one hundred and twenty picks to get through. So first yeah, up, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> first up, the number one pick we had uh, we had high and and he's in the third, the Fort Wayne Durants. Now, how do you feel about Urshvi Single going as the I first am pick? Terrified of this pick. Um, this Pokemon, just the fact that the signature move Wicked Blow always crits. A dark move that always crits is terrifying because, unfortunately, this generation doesn't have all the best fairy types. We lost a lot from previous generations, um, when we came over to Sword and Shield, and not all of them came through in the Isle of Armor. So, there's not a whole lot of Pokemon that resist dark typing in this generation. So, it just, it hits hard. The... Unseen Fist, so it can get through Protect and stuff like that, is really, really good. But just 130 base attack and 97 speed, it's just shy of that tier 100 speed that uh, a lot of Pokemon we want to be at. But mm. overall, this thing it outspeeds so many different minds. It is very hard-hitting. It's Yeah, I've gone against this, and I, a choice Bandit Urshifu wrecks a lot of things. <laughs> Well, one thing I found out recently is that uh, Urshifu actually gets Poison Jab and also Iron Head. So the fairies mm-hmm. don't really work that well for it. And it's like, what no. what, do you, what, what do you want me to do? But uh, all in all, Ursh, Urshifu single as a number one pick, I was I was blown. I was shocked by it. Like, I was honestly shocked by this. I honestly wasn't. <laughs> like, when we when they first announced this Pokemon and some draft leagues are starting to use them when it first came out, I was like, okay, we'll see how this thing goes. But after having a couple months of gameplay and seeing how powerful this thing is, I'm not shocked it went to even the top three, let alone the top spot. Like, oh, yeah. this thing is very terrifying and very, like, if you were able to outspeed it and you have a fairy type move, great. If you can live a hit from it and hit it with a fairy type move, great. Other than that, you might be sacking some things to this. Yeah. You, there's no real safe switching for this thing. That is true, yeah. But uh, I just, uh, I'm just, I'm, I was just shocked. That's all I'm gonna say. I was just shocked. But uh, moving on to the next pick, we have a uh, Shuhusu, and he's taking the Rock, the Rock Tyranitars with their mascot pick, Tyra Tyranida. Pick one. This was a shocker for me. Um, mainly, I was shocked it went so early. The, uh, based off what Pokemon were in the top five uh, that were left, Pokemon like Melmetal, Zeraora, uh, Dracovish, Mew, Aegislash, like all these insanely powerful, just broken mons in Draft League format. Like, nothing against Tyranitar. I think Tyranitar is great. Um, I was just so surprised that with all those extra picks, Tyranitar went its pick two. I mean, he probably wanted to go with his mascot, which is fair. Um, I'm definitely excited to see if he does try to build some sort of sand team with it. Um, but I mean, Tyranitar is a very, very good Pokemon and very hard to deal with at times because you never know. They might not have to bring Sandstream. They can bring an Unearth set and go like crazy with that. So it's a Tyranitar is scary. It's a very good rock, uh, solid rock dark type. But yeah, I was just sort of just shocked that it went pick two overall. Oh, yeah, uh, so was I. But in saying that, but, uh, but, uh, but Chuasu, uh, I've known him for, I don't want to say three, four years, I think I've known him. And this man, he's very underrated with how he, with, with how he plays. 
So, uh, so he plays Durst, and when he chooses the mods he won't. And from what I've seen from this first pick, he has chosen one that he wants to play with. He loves Tyranitar, as you can tell from his uh, team name. But uh, I would say this this pick, yes, it is unorthodox, but it works really well for him. I would say. No, yeah, most of these coaches I don't know. Um, I've been I was out of the scene for a while. And I just recently got back into the draft scene, so a lot of these coaches are new to me. So I don't know. Yeah. You'll know. You have a lot more experience with a lot of them and how they uh, how they play. So uh, I think I've played all of them for. I just, well, I've, I've known all of them for I'd say over a year, but I've but I've played all of them, but like two I think. So yeah. All right. But moving on to the third. Right, so, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say let's move on to the next pick. <laughs> yeah. On to the third pick, we have the Brick Break Crocodiles and and their coach BBK and Rillaboom. Now this. <sighs> this was spice. This was a spice pick three. Yeah. I was not expecting it to go this early. Just like Toro Tyranitar, I expected to go maybe, possibly round two once they get, since yes. he is third overall. If he was like 10th overall, I'd be like, okay, that's understandable. Yeah, um, uh, just what I don't, what I don't understand is, is, is the fact that what there was, there are, there are, there are 10 coaches in the, in, in the draft. So, mm -hmm. so for the pick, so for the pick to get back to him, there was what, 14 picks since then. I still think that he could have got boom on the way back. Hundred percent, agree with that. I one hundred percent agree with that. I think Rillaboom would have been around then. However, I can understand why he picked Rillaboom, and here's a couple oh, of reasons yeah. why. One, the grassy surge ability, like able to set up grassy terrain, is very, very good. Um, and then grassy glide, yeah, I've at that as well. Yeah, that's just a power <clears throat> move to use. So good. Like, I did not prep well against this when I placed against a Rillaboom in the PCL, and a choice ban Grassy Glide destroyed my G-Max Italian was, while I was G-Maxed. Was, was, was this against Quincy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, it's, uh, and, uh, and it yeah. wasn't even Dynamax. It was just a regular Grassy Glide from a choice banded Rillaboom. Completely destroys a Gigantamaxed Italian. Yeah. I was like, Okay, this thing actually hits really relatively hard. Uh, like, its stats are insane for like 125 attack, 100 HP. Its special defense is a little lacking, but pays with that 100 HP. This thing it can eat up hits, especially if you have an assault vest. This thing is going to eat up hits relatively well. Yeah. The grassy terrain setting up to be able to get residual recovery back is really good. The move pool on this thing is insane. Yeah. Knock off, uh, fake out, uh, U turn, like. The fact that this thing gets knockoff, when, I remember when Sword and Shield first came out, there was so little amount of Pokemon that had knockoff. So yeah. seeing that Rillaboom was able to get it just made this thing ten times better. Yeah. Um. So I and drum beating is just it's a phenomenal move, just guaranteeing lowering your opponent's speed by one, so that if you do need to get just one drum beating off to lower someone's speed to get something else in to outspeed it. Yeah. That's going to come in handy a lot. And I'm excited to see if he uses the grassy terrain to his ability at all this season because yeah. it's going to be really good. Oh, for sure, definitely. Uh, like uh, Rillaboom, yes, it yes, yes, it should not have yes, it should not have been a number one pick. Uh, well, or not number one, uh, but a third pick overall. But even picking the number one round uh, with hand coaches, it is still a mon that you can't take lightly. Just, uh, just, no. just like uh, just like as you said, this mon will take lives and hit like a truck. So mm -hmm. that's how I'm about it because because yes, it is a bad pick for where it's picked. But at the same time, it is an awesome pick. Yeah. So it's just I like I agree with you when you first said it's probably could have made it back to him in round two, and he could have picked up one of the much bigger threats that were still available in round one yeah. at this point. Yeah, me too. So, but moving on to the fourth pick, we have uh, we have yourself, absolute uh, and the uh, Seattle Dragonair picking Zero Aura now. The first pick that I see that is, uh, that is, I would say, sm oh no, the second pick I would say that is smart in in, in the draft so far. So when, oh my God, Zero Aura. I so when I was going to this draft, I had no real plan going to this draft. Um, I was like, all right, I need once see where I was gonna land on the on the draft order, and I need to see what's possibly gonna be available. I didn't want to 
rely on having to guarantee pick up one mon and then it goes in the top three spots. So the uh, when I got to here, it was pretty much between this and Mel Metal is what I was like thinking. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, which one do I want? This or Mel Metal? This or Mel Metal? And just looking at Zeroora's stats and moveset, 143 speed. This thing outspeeds by one point Dragapult. Yeah, I think it's the second I think it's so fast. I think it's the second fastest mod in the game, if I recall. I believe, uh, what is it? I think it's uh, the only thing outspeeds is Accelerator 145. Accelerator yes. outspeeds by two yes. points. Yes. Um, like the moveset on this thing is insane. Um, it gets blaze kick. It gets close combat, fake out, iron tail, play rough, outrage. His signature move, plasma fist, volt switch. Uh, it's you can set up with calm mind. You can set up with bulk ups. Um, and the fact that it's one twelve HP, uh, one twelve attack, one o two special attack. Its defenses aren't bad either. Of eighty eight HP, seventy five defense, eighty special defense. This thing is can be so versatile, and that's the one big thing I feel like when it comes to draft league formats is you want versatile mons so that you're always guaranteeing that they never know what you're bringing. And I th feel like Zeror is one of those versatile mons. The only thing people know you're going to be bringing is the speed. This thing is so fast. Um, it's it's going to be a powerhouse. People are not going to... People are not going to... I'm uh, not going to be able to deal with this a lot of times, I feel. I feel like he's just going to break walls and be a real nuisance to people, so they have to somehow prep for the 143 speeds, because it's very yeah, hard to prep for yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Like, like, if you draft another mod that's over, well, that's over 120 speed, people are forced to run a Scarf every game. Like, mm -hmm. that is the thing about Zero, uh, Zero Aura forces you to run a Scarfed mon. And saying that, it is normally it is it is normally the mon that uh, that either gets earthquake EQ or is your ground type. So, in doing that, mm -hmm. prepping with zero aura, you are uh, you are able to identify the scarf on the team easily. And with zero also, and with zero or also having also having uh, also having the ability to knock off. If you run a sugarberry mm -hmm. on it, and you knock off that scarf. And then you can swap into your flying type, or the or, or, or that user, and you're set. Like this mm -hmm. mon has threats to it, but it has the answers to be to be able to counter those threats if mm -hmm. it's built around really well. Which I'm looking forward to see if you've if, if you've uh, we're, done that here. We're gonna hope. We're gonna hope. The one thing I will say that I feel like people always forget about this thing is its ability. Getting having the volt absorb ability to be able to be like, hey. You have a fast electro type that's probably gonna want a volt switch on me. Yeah. Now you just have to second guess that because yeah. of my volt are He's like, I don't want to give this thing uh, a a boost and then also like give health back and then I'm stuck in here. Now I have to find a way to switch out, yeah. make something take a hit. Like yeah. volt absorb, like these type of immunity abilities come in so clutch. I feel like in draft league formats. Yeah. Well, I would like to say this a uh, bit of a spoiler alert, but. Uh... I had, someone, I had someone against me recently use a use a baton pass Jolteon because they were scared of a Volt Absorb or a, mm -hmm. or or a grown user, and that Jolteon and that just makes Jolteon to... not as good because you want that Volt Absorb because Jolteon hits really hard. Yeah. You want to be able to Volt Absorb on on Pokemon, but being forced being forced to run baton pass like that it makes it very not as useful now. Yeah. But moving on to the fifth pick, we have sat there scissors and uh, and their coach Pierce M fifty five with Draco Vish. Oh fifth pick. Now Draco Vish, Draco Vish, Draco Vish. Draco Vish is a mon that if you don't have the answers to it, you you lose, essentially. You you just lose. Mm -hmm. Because if Draco Vish can swap in with that vicious rend, or whether it be scarfed or or, or with webs. Like if you bring heavy booty juke uh, heavy, he heavy duty boots, Draco Vish. Uh, predicting webs to be set up, and and you have no removal, and you get up your own webs also. As long as there's no flying type faster than you, you are basically killing everything on that team, or if not, two I KOing everything on the team. Easy. Yeah, uh, Draco Vish. Uh, the one thing about it, it does not have the sand rush ability, which I learned that it, that was not legal yet. <laughs> uh, I learned that. Uh, a few weeks to go. Um, but the fact is just strong jaw or water absorb. Again, yeah. having that ability to just eat up hits 
having for the free. Ability, yeah, and, and thing is, uh, and have the ability to counter itself. Mm -hmm. It's just something that's unreal. It takes mm -hmm. away. Uh, it takes away one of the I think six water absorb users in the league. Yep. So uh, uh and just it's moves it's. So it can be run physical. Um, it can technically, theoretically, can run special if you really wanted to. Yes. Um, a special attack is seventy. It's not the worst. It is his worst stat, but not seventy is not awful. Yeah. But um, it gets such a phenomenal move set of earthquake, like you said, vicious rend, ice fang, leech life, iron head, psychic fangs, rock slide, zen headbutt. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's it's gonna have really good coverage, and it's gonna be hard for people to try to be like, all right, what is my switch into this thing? Um, because like, cool. I have a bulky grass type. This thing is Ice Fang. Yes. Crap. Yes. <laughs> you want to switch in a water absorber? Yes. Cool. I have Outrage. Do we get exactly? Crap. <laughs> and also, like, it's and so hard to be a guaranteeing knowing what you're gonna switch in on this thing. Because if they are locked into it, great. You know what you can switch in at that point. But if you yeah. don't know if they're locked in, you might just have to sack something off and hope for the best. Yeah, exactly, because, uh, oh, so I've just seen that Dracovish does not get Scale Shot, which is good. Yes, that is very good. Scale Shot is an insane uh, move, and I'm glad it doesn't get it. Because <laughs> yes, that speed boost would be just un unparalleled. Because yeah, his speed, th that's the one thing about Dracovish, his speed isn't all great. Yes. It is only base 75. So a lot of times you're going to see people run either Sticky Webs, if they have it, or Choice Scarf. Dracovich just so they can get that Ficious yeah. Ren boosted uh, strong jaw off. But um, if they don't, uh, but that's sort of what your only real saving grace is you are thinking either they're either bringing webs or this thing is going to be Toy Scarf and you sort of have to play around that. Yeah, exactly. But moving so. on to the sixth pick, we have uh, the Chicago Corviknights and their coach Zach with Extra Drill going for another Sand team here. Sorry. I love this pick. I uh, this is a pick that I am okay with going in the top five. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Ex sure. Exedrill and draft league format. As someone who's been using it in the PCL, it's so good if you have sand to back it up with it. Um, it does suck that he did lose out on one of the best sand setters for him in Tyranitar. Yes. Um, earlier in the draft, but this thing just having that base one thirty five attack, eighty eight speed, but in sand rush. And when sand goes up, oh boy, this thing is out speeding a lot of things. Um, and this thing is just 110 HP. Like, this thing can eat up some hits relatively nicely. Um, it gets po poison jab, it gets earthquake, it gets such amazing move pull on this thing. Yeah, it does for sure. Uh, and just uh, extra drill is a mon to be known over the years to be in the top five kill leaders in almost every league. Mm -hmm. Like yep. I like I remember seeing a league where there was like eleven battles, and then uh, Extra Drill had I think thirty three kills in the in, in that season, uh, on the, in the regular season. So basically, yeah. basically, so uh, so Extra Drill averaged three kills a game that season, and it's just like <laughs> this it's mon insane. Uh, this mon is underrated, but at the same time, it is not underrated. Like, yeah, it is like like it is a mon, a where, a either a where either it can come in, take a hit, set up rocks, spin them away, or it can come in and just ruin your day. Like mm -hmm. it is a mon. And what's yeah, you go. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But um, I will say the one thing that I do like a lot about this thing is that you don't have to run sand rush. You don't have to bring sand every single week. No, you don't. It has an amazing ability called Mold Breaker. Yes. That just ignores a levitate, which is one of the biggest things that um you worry about having a ground type is if you see a levitate on your opposing team, it's like, man, I can't safely just click Earthquake whenever I want because they have a levitator. But with this extra drill, it has Mold Breaker. Yep. So the only the only thing that doesn't want to take an Earthquake, and that is willing to take be immune to an Earthquake hit, is a, a Flyer. And if you don't see a Flyer on their team, you're spamming EQ all day, every day, and it's exactly. just racks. Exactly. Because what, 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 the only ones that basically the basically want to EQ are what grass types and then flying types. Mm -hmm. But to most flying types, uh, you can normally click rock slide, stone edge, done, sorted. So whereas the yep, grass and... types, are you, uh, 
Uh, Exeter. Yeah, ex 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 Aerial Ace. Yeah, exactly. So it, uh, so it has the counters to the ones that want to counter it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's such a great mod. I'm looking forward to see if he is able to grab a sand setter to, uh, to pair with it this season and seeing how well he rocks with it because, oh boy, that thing is really good. Yeah. So moving on to the seventh pick, we have myself, the Australian Arcanines, and their coach, Jetman's Jetman 99, with Volcarona as the number one pick. Now, I will say this I am pissed about this pick. I am pissed. Pissed, <laughs> pissed, 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 pissed. pissed. <laughs> So, I went into the draft thinking, thinking, oh, seventh pick, I won't get Zero Aura, I won't get Dragapult. So, what I'll do is, I will plan a team that I want to use. Planned a team, because the draft started at 12 a.m. my time, I put in the pick, went to bed. Come to wake up to find that I got Volcarona, happy, yay, sorted. Then saw that there was Dragapult still on the table. Mm -hmm. so there, was up, there was Mew. There was Age of Slash. Yeah. Melmetal and all that. So I was here thinking that all those mons were um, <laughs> going to go top six, and if there was an and there was one or two left, sure, fine, so be it. I got Volcarona, I'm happy. But the fact that it was Dragapult, the the Pokemon that should have gone number one or two pick, mm -hmm. ooh, I was salty. But <laughs> I mean, so Volcarona thoughts? is a phenomenal pick. Like you cannot be mad that you have Volcarona oh, though. Absolutely. Like. This thing is so good on the fact that it is has such an amazing 135 base special attack. Base 100 speed, but if you get that Quiver Dance off, oh boy, you're outspeeding some things. What's also nice is that it can be run bulky. I've seen plenty of like bulky Volcarona sets with the Flame Body ability and burning your opponent with that Flame Body and just sort of just rocking like a bulky uh, Roost Quiver Dance set and just sweeping teams. This thing has such an amazing move coverage of Bug Buzz, um, Psychic, uh, Giga Drain, Hurricane, uh, except your own Tailwind for your team if you want to, has U-Turn for priority, I mean for uh, um, switching out. Um, this has Whirlwind to get your opponent's uh, setup mods out of there. Yeah. It ugh, This Pokemon is insane. It's so good. The only thing I have to watch out for is Rocks. But, but Heavy Duty Boots, boots yes. makes it so much better now. Yep, exactly, and that's the reason why that I wanted Volcarona because because Volcarona has such versatility, and 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 Volcarona suits my playstyle perfectly. I would say Volcarona is a mon that I think I don't think I've ever used, but it is a mon that if I was to use, it'd suit my playstyle perfectly. So I'm keen You're to have use fun. it for the season. Yeah, oh, I will. Don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna enjoy Volcarona. Like it is gonna be fun times. The uh, the the only downside to Volcarona, it is a bug type that does not get sticky webs, which yep. is unfortunate. Yeah, so, sticky webs is sort of gonna be useful for you if you are able to get a Pokemon that does get sticky webs later. Um, that'll pair very well with Volcarona, just because yep. the sticky webs are gonna be able to make sure that you outspeed everything at that point with Volcarona. Yeah, exactly. But with that being said, let's move on to the eight pick. And the eighth pick is Lord Chi and his team, the Philadelphia Phantoms, picking up Urshifu Rapid with the eighth pick. Now, I'm not mad about this, but I, but I'm happy with it being eighth pick. But with the picks that have happened so far, I think that this mon could have got back to him with there being four picks in between him and his next pick. One hundred percent agree. Uh, I seeing what I'm like I said, what I was really shocked by at this point, there are so many so powerful minds that are still up there, and I'm just like, and okay, Dragapult one of these is still on the board. Dragapult is still on the flipping board. Melmetal is still on the board. Mew, one of the most versatile mods in the entire league, is still on the board. And I'm just like, why, why rap? Why the worst Urshifu? Which kills me to say, because I love Urshifu Rapid over. Like, mm -hmm. aesthetically and being a fighting water, I think it's sweet. Um, but it's just not as good as w uh, Wicked Blow or Shifu, uh, Single Strike. Yeah. But, I mean, this thing still gets pretty much all the same coverage. Um, the only thing that gets different is the Surging Strikes. It hits three times, and all the three of them crit. Yeah. So that's really the only difference that I know. Yeah, it pretty much is. Like, they, like, they both get the same moveset, other than... Uh... Uh, the signature move. 
And then one gets counter, and the other gets um something else, I think. Yeah. But I can't remember. Does Rapid get Sucker Punch? No. So yeah. the Urshifu Water gets counter, I believe. No, it gets Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet, yes. Yeah, um, gotcha. Aqua Jet, while the Urshifu Single Strike gets Sucker Punch. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, those are their... Which Aqua Jet, I personally think, is better than Sucker Punch a lot of times, because yeah. you have to rely on them actually yeah. using attacking move. Exactly. But with so, the, I mean... But with the Urshifu yeah. Rapid here... Uh, Yes, it is a yes, it is the worst Urshifu, but still, it is a mod where you, uh, where if you haven't prepped well for it, it will it will it will take lots. Yeah, and the only reason why I say it's the worst one is because this has a lot more Pokemon that resist its uh critical hit move. Yeah. Than the single strike one because bulky grass and bulky waters will wall this Urshifu Rapid relatively well. Well, yeah, and, and in saying that, uh, and for the Dracovish, uh, so if you draft a Water Absorb user, that mod also comes in handy against this Urshifu. Mm -hmm. so, yep. So, uh, so having the Urshifu in the draft, it is actually beneficial to be able to pick up a Water Absorb user on your team to mm -hmm. to be able to stop the Urshifu and, or, and, and Dracovish. So... Yep, I agree with that. Yeah, but moving on to the ninth pick, we have uh, the Ro the Roman Polyons and their coach Aaron Twelve finally picking up Joe Gagapop. Finally, the ninth pick. Ninth pick overall, and I'll be saying, spoiler alert, I'm going against them week one, and I am terrified of just this Pokemon alone. Yeah, this thing is so oh. like. When I drafted Zoro, I was like, okay, cool. A lot of times, I won't need to run max speed on my Zero Aura because I'm going to outspeed most of my opponent's team with little speed investment. Now, I can't do that against Aaron in week one because I outspeed it by one point, so I have to be max speed. Like, that's how fast Dragapult and how terrifying it is to have a fast Pokemon like that. It being 142 base speed, 120 attack, 100 special attack. Yeah. So, I have no idea what he's planning with it. <laughs> yeah. So well, let me tell you something. So last season we were on showdown, but we did Galadex across all three leagues, and in those three mm -hmm. leagues there was four Dragapults in, in the leagues. So in Z Move, Dragapult was not MVP or, or kill leader. In D Max, Dragapult was MVP. In uh, G Max, uh, and and I know this. So for G Max, so uh, so uh, Dragapult was MVP and kill leader from the same coach, but there was another coach that had Dragapult second as MVP and also second as kill leader, like two kills behind. So Dragapult is a mon that 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 if you use it correctly, this mon is unstoppable, and that is the reason why mm -hmm. I'm shocked that it is gone at the ninth pick. And not in the top three. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Like, the, the moveset is insane with its coverage. You get the U-turn and Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt, Surf, uh, Shadow Ball, Psychic Fangs, Phantom Force, Outrage, Flamethrower, all the dragon coverage you freaking want. Scold as well. Scold. Um, uh, yep, the only thing, the only downside that I say Dragon Ball has, and this is a very minute, dra uh, minute point, is that its best physical ghost move is Phantom Force, is Phantom Force which takes a turn to use. So yeah. that's the only downside to Dragon Ball. If it learned anything, like it, uh, it can, technically it gets Dragon Pull, Dragon Claw, and Dragon Darts. Yeah, those are very good, but I mean, Phantom Force is its strongest dark type, I mean, strongest physical ghost type move. It doesn't get. I was saying it gets outraged, but sorry, I didn't really get outraged. Yeah. But still, it's like, well, uh, but like, for ghost wise, ugh. yeah, like, couldn't they give it like a shadow punch? Yes, its hands are uh, like. If you can give Wooper the elemental punches, you can give it to freaking Dragon Ball here, yeah. like, yeah, fair, or like fair. Shadow Claw, like where's yeah, Shadow yeah, Claw? That as well, yeah, but uh, but. Like, uh, it, but in saying that, Dragapult will still take lives, and oh, 100. And that's and that's the reason why that to all the coaches before Aaron, including myself, I under I understand why you've gone for those picks, but to be able to let Dragapult get to pick nine, Aaron, 
Aaron should win the league right now just from this pick at, at, at pick nine. Like, okay, I, I'm going like, to disagree with you on that one because there are a couple of picks that were as equally as good as Dragapult. Yes, at the same time. Leaving leaving Dragapult to, to pick nine, that is the one thing that I just don't comprehend. It is a shock that it went this far, but it looks like the people who drafted before him have some sort of plan. And that's why and Dragon Ball didn't fit into those mm. plans. It's the only thing I can assume. Yeah, true. But, oh, okay, but uh, moving on before you're too triggered. We have the wheel pick, and that pick is... Oops. Don't tell me I've messed up the name. No, I haven't. Okay. So, it is the Las Vegas Las Vardias for Looney. Ignore the coach name. I mess that up. I'll, I'll <laughs> I just noticed I said Aaron. Yeah. Aaron is yeah, not the coach of two two teams, ladies and gentlemen. But you will see, but you see the coach name next pick, uh, and it is Looney, and he's gone for the other eighteen month mon pick in Mew. Now, 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 Mew is eighteen because this Pokemon can be run any way you see fit. It learns every move possible in the game, where mm-hmm. you have your uh, TRs, your TMs. And all that. Mm-hmm. So, whereas Mew does not get every move, if it could get every move, it would. And and with and, and with what a uh, hundred base stats ar- ar- around the board, Mew is just a mon that you have to prep for everything when you see it on the other team. Hundred uh, percent. It literally can be physical, special, defensive, special defense. It can be a fast uh hazard center it could be a utility mom with reflect and light screen it could be a cleric it can literally be anything you want it to be it is in my opinion one of the best if not the best pokemon to use in draft league formats because it is so versatile and everything it wants to do you never know what it's going to be until it's already doing it you cannot prep for this mod yeah, exactly. I'm just saying, and hit the pick that he gets with it, pairing it with Mew. I, I, I almost like I, I keep shivering just the the thought of it. Yeah. It's and speaking God. of that, and speaking of the next pick, we have a uh, AG slash. He's gone for Mew and AG slash to start off his draft. Now we've got, oh, I'm so terrified. Yeah, <laughs> and now if that doesn't scream, pussy, run away. I've got you. I don't know what does. <laughs> I just don't know what does. Uh, it's so insane. Like the fact that I, I love Aegis Last. I've never had the opportunity to use Aegis Last, and it kills me because this thing is so good. Um, just the 140 defense, 140 special defense. This thing is so bulky when it's in the shield mode, oh, yeah. but then when it switches to its sword mode, to its yeah. blade mode, boy, this thing is gonna hurt. Yeah. And it's going to wreck. And the fact that it can be literally physical or special. And King Shield is such a great way of stopping Pokemon that are locked in to oh, yes. uh, from physical moves. Um, the fact yeah. that it gets autonomized to be able to start outspeeding some things. It gets yeah. Iron Defense to uh, make sure it's still bulky. Sacred Sword is a phenomenal move. It gets substitute. Shadow Sneak. Substitute. substitute. <sighs> if, you, if you have Substitute while, uh, while in sword, uh, Shield mode... You can, 75% of the time, get up a sub. Mm-hmm. And then, and then also, live the sub and get up a Swords Dance, and then just Shadow Sneak the team away. Yep, it and is. It, yes. And, and, if you can pair that substitute with Leftover as well, you, you have the chance to get up to plus four. Hmm. attack and then your shadow snake basically kills everything late game like like this mon if paired well with other wall breakers Aegis slash won't even need to be its own wall breaker it just needs to be the wall mm-hmm. and, and it gets such amazing uh, moves that people will forget yeah, about it gets magnet yeah. rise which yeah. can, will make it so that it can no longer be hit by the ground type uh, attacks which is really yeah. nice but then you got the brand new move this uh this uh, generation in solar blade and i would love to see looney run a power herb solar blade set with the sanctions to just destroy a bulky water type just not against me don't do it against me Damn, but that is just what 
hit. Okay. Ah, that's just, it's terrifying how powerful this thing can be. Yeah. And pairing it as such a versatile mod, pairing it with a versatile Mew, these two are going to be such a nuisance to deal with. Now, granted, they're both weak to dark and ghost. So, time to there are ways on, to get around it. Time to stack on, on, on dark and ghost types. But with that Pretty much, said, you need it. <laughs> we, are, uh, we, we are onto the 12th pick, and we have Ferrothorn uh, at the 12th pick for Coach Aaron. Now, Ferrothorn gets its rocks, uh, it gets knockoff, it gets gyrable. Like, this mon is a, it can be a pain to deal with, but with the typing it has also, uh, you just have to run a fire type move, and then you basically have it in a 2 0 KO. Essentially. True. I will say though, he has a mon that would love to just nom on those fire type hits. Yes. Called Dragapult. Yeah. Oh look, you have a dragon or a fairy type move you want to use my Dragapult. I'm now gonna switch in Ferrothorn and eat yum yum yum. Like it these two pair together. <coughs> Excuse me. Right like now. he has an amazing dragon steel core right now. Yeah. Um it's, uh, it's. Yeah. I, I love Ferrothorn. I've used it in the past, and yeah. sure, it has that four times weakness to fire. But y with an, you can work around that, and this thing is just a nuisance to yeah. deal with. And insane. So I'm gonna make a prediction here. So seeing as Dragapult got, uh, uh, so seeing as Aaron got Dragapult in in, in pick nine, I'm gonna predict that he's gonna get Clefable next round. And then he's. So was that? So I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict next round. That Aaron is gonna have a chance to be able to pick up Clefable, and if he gets Clefable, that team is gonna be just unreal. If he gets Clefable to pair with this, uh, I I just don't know what how I'm, we stop that. I'm gonna like, quit. So I'm, I'm gonna quit. So I'm gonna say. <laughs> with that being said, goodbye to your ten and one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your one is gonna hope. You're gonna hope your one is against Aaron. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, uh, we we gonna pick their team with Philadelphia Tank Tops. I'm picking my mascot. Lord Chief <laughs> at Arcanine. Now, I'm not mad about this. Arcanine is fine. Uh, it is a mod that gets Intimidate. It gets a will o -Wisp. It gets Morning Sun, Flare Blitz, Wild Charge to handle, to handle those boggy waters. So, uh, it even gets Snarl to be, to be able to stop those special attackers against it. So, Arcanine is a good mod to, to have. And... And I would say that it is a bit early to pick it up, but also saying that, but with where Jake is at in the draft right now, it for him it is a it is a good place to get it, as he mm -hmm. as he may not get it coming back to him at the like the next I think I think his next pick is like the twenty fourth pick. So yeah, I was honestly like I thought this was a great because he's sort of doing the opposite of Aaron's doing. Aaron's going for his uh, starting out with going for his fairy dragon steel core, while Lord XA here is going for his Fire Water Grass Core, seems like, to start out. Let's get it yeah. started. I think Ar Arcanine is great pairing with our Shrew Rapid. Um, and the one thing that's really good about Arcanine this uh, this generation is a move called Scorching Sands. Yeah. Arcanine never had a good ground-type move besides Bulldoze. It can never learn Earthquake. So it never was able to handle really well other fire types. And that was yes. always the biggest issue with Arcanine. It could use Flash Fire and eat up the Fire type hits, but it couldn't do enough damage to dish out back. Yeah. But now with a Scorching Sands, that also that uh, uh, that also has a chance to to burn Mons. So if mm -hmm. so, if you have a Fire type in against Arcanine, and then and then and then you think, oh, I can get burned. No, no, no. You think oh, it's going to, oh, oh, I'm going to get hit. I'm going to stop out. And then you get one of the other Mons burned. You are mm -hmm. dumb for not staying in, but you're also smart for swapping out. And that exactly. is what makes it hard about about the Nemu Scorching Sands. Because it's so good. And because it affects your fire types but at the same time. Your fire types are the only ones that they basically can't get burned. Mm -hmm. uh, like the only counter to scorching to scorching sands is uh, is a fire type levitate, which I don't think there is any. There is. Uh, there's one. There's called Rotom. I mean Rotom Heat. Yes, but that. Um, that, yeah, and, that, and yeah, and, and and then your other one is Moltres Charizard. Yeah, your flying types. So, exactly. 
Um, I will say the one thing that I didn't learn about recently, which is really cool, Arcanine also now has access to ways of uh, switching out and having that ability because it doesn't get U turn, uh, doesn't get Volt yes. Switch, teleport. And also, in saying that, teleport moves last. So, in it, saying exactly. That, so, in saying that, you you can run a bulky Arcanine with leftovers. Uh, with uh, with leftovers morning sun. Now, if mm-hmm. you pair that in the sun, it heals up seventy five percent of its health. So, this mod can take a hit, teleport out, and just ruin your whole plan. Be- exactly. Because in Santa, because all the teleport is good, it is rarely brought on Arcanine. Which is so surprising because if having that ability to have a slow switch out and having that priority. So like, cool, you get to remove, Arcanine took a hit, I'm teleporting out, so now my Pokemon is a safe switch in now to come in and deal with your team now. It's so good. It's such a, it's like, slow U-Turner, slow Volt Switch, all those type of, of slow Baton Pass are such crucial things to have because you never always want to go first sometimes because then whatever you bring in has to take the hit. But if the Pokemon that's already in can take the hit, then you switch out, then you bring in the threat to deal with that Pokemon. So I feel like a teleport on Arcanine is such a crucial, amazing move to have on him that hopefully we'll see Lord XT be able to use it once in a while in this, because I think it's a very underrated move to have on Arcanine, and I think if you use correctly, it's going to be a pain for people to deal with. Yeah, exactly. But moving on to the 14th pick, we have myself and we have Barris Scooter. Now, I love Barris Scooter. And in say that Barris Scooter has the possibility to be the fastest mod in the game. And that is the reason why I just love it so much. Barrascooter paired up with a choice band. And if I can get rain, it no mod can outspeed Barrascooter. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I was a little shocked to see this as round two. Um, I definitely could have seen you picking this up three, four, maybe in five. Um, it definitely is an interesting mod. Um, like I said, choice ban on this thing can be really, really useful. And it gets moves like close combat, drill run, flip turn for momentum, um, liquidation, ice fang, night slash, poison jab. Like the insane move pool it has, like I said, with the choice ban, if you are able to get rain up, it's going to be hard to deal with. Um, do you have the only thing you really have to deal with? You have poison jab and ice fang to deal with bulky grass types. The only issue. And bounce. And bounce, yes, you do get bounce. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is water absorb Pokemon. Yes. Because if you are a choice ban and they know you're going to go for a water type hit, then they just switch in your bear, they switch in on your bear scooter with a water absorb and just make sure your bear scooter has to switch out now. So that is the only thing that bear scooter doesn't have. It doesn't have great coverage to deal with bulky water absorb Pokemon. But. It also gets up just the rest of this move pool is insane. 123 base attack, 136 speed. Even if you don't have uh, the rain up, this thing is still going to outspeed a lot of things, and you're, you're forcing your opponents to bring choice cards. Yep. Exactly. And pairing this with a Volcarona with a Quiver Dance Volcarona, it's going to be hard to get, guarantee outspeed your team so far. Yeah, exactly. Because you pair Volcarona with Varuscuda uh, and those bulky water types. Because yes, Volcarona does not want to take it from those water types. Still, it gets Giga Drain, Solar Beam. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. uh, so if so if I can get up a Quiver Dance, Power Herb, Solar Beam. No, no water type wants wants to take that hit, which is good. Yeah. But moving on. To, very good. Moving on to the fifteenth pick, we have Zach, and and he's going for Clefable. Now, so Clefable can't get to Aaron. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but same but, point, pairing that with an extra drill. It's terrifying. One of the mons that can is Clefable so well. With Mold Breaker, you are you are able to run setup against Clefable. Mm-hmm. But now that the fact that he has Clefable and extra drill, Clefable is going to be a pain to deal with if you do not have the right tools to be able to deal with it. One of the best mons in Draft League format to deal with Clefable is One extra drill. One of the most consistent ha- mons in Draft League format. Mm-hmm. And he has it both on the same team together. It is 
very, very terrifying to have this score because Fable is such an amazing mine with great move coverage. It has a uh, great ability in uh, wish passing. Um, it's a cleric. Um, it's just this thing is so bulky with its 95 HP and 90 special defense. This thing is going to take up special hits relatively well, and you can just start setting up on things so well. Um, it's the fable is such a with magic guard it ignores toxic so that you don't have to worry about ever being toxic ever with this thing so you can easily just set up all day every day and no issues it's i'm not i'm not looking forward to playing this core of the fable and extra draw it is not going to be fun to play against. Oh, not for sure but moving on to the next pick we have the 16th pick and pierce with incineroar now incineroar this is the one that you can say that has gone early 100 percent Incineroar is a uh, is is I'd say like a late third or a or even a late fourth pick. But they yeah, have and go if... second when there is still a mull medal on the board. Yeah. yeah, it's so you can see when you were watching this video, you'll see the points break down yeah. on the screen. So you'll see that Dracovich was 16 while Incineroar was 10. That means there is at least five different tiering of Pokemon that could have gone over Incineroar here. Now, there's nothing to go against Incineroar. Incineroar is a phenomenal mine. Um, it can do a lot of really good work with Fake Out. Intimidate is such an amazing ability to have to, uh, just to sort of like cripple some, uh, some physical attackers. It has really good, honestly, bulk. It's 95 HP, 90 defense, 90 special defense. 1 at 15 attack, like this thing can be a threat with Darkest Lariat, Fake Out, Flare Blitz, Knock Off. It is a Knock Off user, which is very, very crucial to have. Um, Parting Shot, which is a, uh, a great move to have that momentum to switch out, and then also weakening your opponent so you can bring in something like Dracovish or a setup mod to start setting up can be really, really good. Yeah. Um, but I do agree. I don't think round two is probably the place to pick it. He was probably. Worried it might have gone by now. Well, yeah. Like it might go by the time it gets back to him. But honestly, looking at everyone's picks, he easily could have got this round three well, and been totally fine. Well, exactly. Looking at what because you even have a Corviknight on the on the on the table still as well to get. So, mm -hmm. so one thing I've noticed from this draft, it is it is a very unorthodox draft from yes. everyone, other than other than like you could say Zach or 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 Aaron. But that is because they have been given the chance to take advantage of it, and they've seen it. Mm -hmm. So to them, kudos. But moving on to the next pick, we have we have yourself picking up picking up the B Tech Corbinite Skarmory. Wait, what did you just call Skarmory? Did you say B Tech? Nah, B nah, B nah, 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 nah. B Tech nah. Corbinite. No, Skarmory is the OG. All right, he is so good. Okay, when I was looking at these two, because Corbinite was still on the on the on here. And I was looking at these two, and it came down to what I sort of felt like what was more useful for my team. Because I what, one thing I wanted was I needed a Mon that was immune to Ground-type hits. So I know I needed a Flying-type, and I wanted uh, a Steel-type at this point. So I knew Skarmory and Corviknight were two amazing Mons. The one thing I'll say, Skarmory is bulkier than Corviknight. Corviknight is a more offensive Steel-Flying-type. It can be very bulky. But it has a little bit more offense to him. Iron However, defense, body press, done. I take lives. <laughs> I mean, Corbinet has 105 defense. Skarmory has 140 defense. So Fair. on that point, but uh, Corbinet has better HP and has better special defense. So he's a little bit more well rounded. Yeah. But with Skarmory, the one thing that uh, that Corbinet does not have. That Skarmory does is hazards. Yes. Stealth rocks and spikes. That is true. That is the one huge thing I saw. I was like, please, if Cor if Skarmory sticks around, I really want the ability to have stealth rocks and spikes to pair with Zero yeah. Orb. Because if so. I get those up, Zero Orb is one shotting everything if I'm able oh, yeah. to get hazards up. Because exactly. nothing wants to take you from, yeah, exactly. from Zero Orb. Uh, and the one thing I will add, uh, so with uh, so with Skarmory being uh, having having electric super effective, but the fact he paired that with Zero Aura with with Volt, mm -hmm. with, with Volt Absorb, uh, 
both your weaknesses on both mons are now countered with each other, which just exactly. works so well. Like the, it was such a great yeah, pairing. Exactly. Like the like the only way that these two can have a super effective hit between them both is if the other team runs gravity. But in saying that, gravity is only learned by Gigalith and I think two other mons in this gen. So mm -hmm. it is a rare bring against it. But in, with that being said, it's a good pick. But uh, Skarmory, Skarmory to Covenite is the old school Ronaldo to the new school Ronaldo. I said it. I said it. I said it. You, you said it, but we'll see who has a better season. Skarmory or Covenite. We'll have to see. But I, I'm banking on my boy here because yeah. I love Skarmory. I'm a third genner. I love my third gen Pokemon. And I, I, have, I have a soft place for Skarmory. Skarmory has, uh, has a place in my heart and always will. So we'll see how well it goes. Uh, isn't Skarmory second gen? It is, but I used it for third. I was kidding. It say. is second gen, yes. But I used a lot of third <laughs> okay. gen. Uh, getting, uh, picking it up after you beat uh, Flannery was yes. one of the biggest pickups. Yes. I loved using a third gen. Yeah, but with that being said, we are onto the 18th pick, and and BBK with his big sender race, picking up both the start, picking up two or three starters for the league. But also, he, he has to pick. He has to pick up a Talion, right? He has, he has to pick up a Talion next. If like... he doesn't, if if he doesn't, I'm gonna kick him. Done. <laughs> sort of. Oh god. But, um. Uh, th this is a great pickup. This is a really good pickup. Because you now... can run heavy, heavy, heavy duty boots, court change. You don't take a, you, mm -hmm. you you don't you don't take you don't take damage from hazards. Same time. You don't need to bring your own hazards. You don't even need to bring removal. You have court change to swap the hazards over. And then and then you're essentially using the, your own opponent's ideas against them. Because if your opponent decides to hazard stack with a cinder race, say if say say if he has stealth rocks up. Say if uh plus also add two laser spikes and then also sticky webs. You court change that over, your opponent is now royally fucked. Yep. I, I will say this one thing about Cinderace, and this is crucial for everyone to know. Libero is banned. It is banned, yes. But it, So this but, is just blaze Cinderace. But at the same time, does not take away the fact that Cinderace is a mon that can, that can seem harmless, but can come in on your team, change, change the hazards over, and then ruin your whole plan if you are unaware that it gets court change. Yeah, court change is a phenomenal move. Um, but outside of court change, the reason why this thing was so busted with Libero and it went back to Protean Greninja back in the day, its move pool is insane. It gets gunk shot, it gets acrobatics, it gets bounce, it gets um, low kick, it gets. Uh, what else we got here? We got Scorching Sands. We got Sucker Punch. We get U-Turn, then Headbutt. This thing is Iron Head. It covers so much coverage for his team that I feel like pairing that with Rillaboom and Rillaboom is really good coverage. These two are going to be the very amazing, hard-hitting physical attackers on his team that's going to be hard to deal with. You need to make sure you have mods that can eat up hits from Rillaboom and Cinderace, because if you don't, one of them is going to destroy you. And also in saying that, you pair that with a 120 base power pyro ball with stab, that is becoming mm -hmm. a 180 base power fire type, fire type move. Yeah, and his speed is nothing to crack out either. Yes, his exactly. speed is 119. 119. It, it's you, so fast. You can pair that with a choice band more than likely most of the time. And, mm -hmm. the, and your only counters to it are basically... Uh, are basically a flash fire user. Mm -hmm. Flash fire users or choice scarfers is pretty much your yes, best bet. Yes, pretty much. But with that being said, let's move on to the next pick. Uh, for the 19th pick, we have Shuhasu and Malmetal coming off the board there, paired paired with a Tyranitar. That's really good pairing. Um, these two together are very, very going to be a hard... Uh, a very hard poor to break down now the only problem is for this team so far and i'm we're, i'm sort of hoping that the rockstar terrain terror sense sort of fix this as they move forward there are two urchifus that have been drafted yeah urchifu destroys this team so far I mean, any strong hitting fighting type move wrecks these two and, 
and even a strong hitting ground type move as well. Exactly. So but, that's the one thing I hope he finds cover for. Maybe a, a bulky flying type might be able to help him with that. Um, um, but it, besides if, that, though, yeah. Melt Metal is a phenomenal bond. If he can pick up Toga Kiss, perfect pick for him. Perfect pick. If he oh, can, 100%. If he can pick up Toga Kiss, Toga Kiss or even Mantine, because Mantine gets water absorb, perfect pick. Mm-hmm. Yep. Any bulk, just any bulking flying type that is, we'll make sure. You are res- uh, resisting your fighting type hits, so nothing like mana buzz or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you're going to be perfectly fine. But the move pool on this thing, you have, of course, Choice Banded Double Iron Bash is a terrifying thing to hit. But also, he gets Darkest Larry, he gets Gyro Ball, he gets High Horsepower. With 80 special defense, I mean, 80 special attack, it gets moves like Ice Beam. Um, it gets uh, Thunderbolt, it gets Discharge, it gets. You can run it as a bulky standard on body press with this 143 base defense and 135 HP. This thing is going to live on the physical side relatively well, and you can just body press everything to death if you want to. Like, this mod is really, really good. Yeah, exactly. But moving on to the next pick for the 20th pick and for the and for the other wheel pick, we have Dur- uh, we have Jirachi from high. Now, Jirachi is, is the bane of my existence. Jirachi is <laughs> the reason why I have well, it's not the exact reason why I have torn shirts apart, but it's the reason why that I have probably broken a few screens in my in <laughs> in my YouTube career. Like Jirachi is just a mon where basically you can you can run your para flinch, but if you don't want mm-hmm. it, you can you can run your rock, you can run your wish passer. Like it is a mon that can be versatile, take hits, and if need be. It can be a sweeper as well. But, so that's the reason it's, why the It's so very good. similar to Mew in a lot of aspects because they are both uh, the base 100 mythical Pokemon for each stat. Um, so it's going to be able to eat up a lot of a lot of hits. It'll be able to dish out a lot of hits. It's very versatile in its moveset. It's not as versatile as Mew, but Steel Psychic is such a great typing pairing together. Like It's, uh, it's going to be a very hard Pokemon. A very hard... Uh, Pokemon that people are going to be able to deal with. Yeah, so. exactly. But moving on to the next pick, we have the 21 pick and the other wheel pick in Sylveon. Now, Sylveon pairs so well with Urshifu single because it is a fairy type. It, no, it is a good fairy type that is taken out of the way mm-hmm. from being counted from him. And that's the reason why he's drafted Sylveon perfectly because, uh, because now that Clefable and Sylveon are gone, there is one less mon that he has to worry about hitting into while while using Urshifu, which is good. And then to even pair that with a with a Jirachi, if a if a steel type or a poison type wants wants to come in, bring in Jirachi. Psychic attack. Or if not, go for your wish pass. Go for your go for your paralysis. Like like Sylveon mm-hmm. paired on this team is absolutely perfect. It's I agree. Pairing just uh outside of Urshifu, Urshifu Jirachi and Sylveon being very good defense core pairing with each other because they cover each other weaknesses so well. Um, they're both wish passers. They're both clerics, so they can do both very similar things. People, uh, but also just a choice spec Sylveon with uh, Pixelate did get a nerf uh, uh, last generation, but um, Pixelate Hyper Voice is still an insane move to be hit by a Sylveon. So if you don't want to run a defensive Sylveon. An offensive Sylveon is very still viable. Yeah. And in saying that, just to be able to have two wish users on the on the same team as well. Oh, it's so gross. It is so good. But so good. Pick twenty two. We are back to Shurusu, and he's picked up the Mimikyu here. Yeah. I this is interesting. That, yes. To pair with the team, I see why he may have done it, but at the same time, don't get me wrong. It is a good pick, but. I just don't feel comfortable with it on this team for some reason. I just, feel, I just feel at, I just feel it's amazed. awkward. Yes. It, it, a good way of putting it is awkward. It, it's another physical attacker to pair with Tyranitar Mel Metal, Metal. Yes. It's a, uh, sure. You can always guarantee you get a sword stance up, and then you can start shadow sneaking things and stuff like that because you get the. They did nerf disguise, which was very good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but, but at the it, same time. So all you need is basically a ground type 
for a ground normal type such in such as Diggersby and you're set. Diggersby no. Diggersby yeah, and it... you're set. Because the Mimikyu yeah, is I... because the Mimikyu is forced to go for its for its fairy attack and then saying that play rough has a chance to miss. And on Mimikyu, I've heard a lot of stories about Mimikyu choking and missing the play rough in times of need. So whereas play rough is I will, strong I will move, say though before we move on, I will say one thing though. We do need to move on. Um, is it does cover the fighting type weakness of Tyranitar and Metal being a does, ghost yeah, type. It does. That is so true. That's the and only that's... real benefit I see from Mimikyu right now on this team. Yeah. Exactly. Just by these three picks alone. Because one thing is, so 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 he needs a fighting fighting resist and immunity at the same time. He's picked up the immunity and the resist in in the one Pokemon, and that's the problem. Yeah. He could have because Scrappy is a uh, Scrappy is an ability, so yes, exactly. So he could have picked up a Ghost type and then a Fairy type, and then he'd have two two, two resist. But it, but instead he's combined them and therefore has hindered him essentially. But with the twenty third mm -hmm. pick, we have BBK and he's gone for Toxtricity. The this was the music interesting. Itself. This was an interesting pick. Hang on, no. So I have to kick him now. I have, I have to kick him because there's no Intellion. <laughs> fair fair yeah you do have to kick him he did say so we have a live here on, on the video he said it he has to kick bbk now um we're gonna have dms open for new coaches coming through let's know uh but no in all seriousness so toxicity was an interesting pick um with grassy terrain rillaboom it makes it so that you're not as terrified of ground type hits um but just cinderace being already weak to fighting i mean weak to sorry weak to ground and Toxtricity being four times weak to ground, it's like... If they can just get rid of Rillaboom or get rid of the rest of the terrain, you're not going to want to take a ground type hit at all. Yep. So exactly. you got to be careful of that. Um, and I'm not sure how good Toxtricity is in drop-sleek formats. I haven't seen a lot of people use it, so I'm interested to see how he plays with this this season, just to see how good it is. Uh, one thing I know, uh, Toxtricity is run a lot with uh, Throat Spray. And also webs. It's it it is paired well with that. So, That's fair. Yes, I'm I'm looking forward to see how it's used. But at the same time, um, shattered that there is no Intellion here. But moving on. To yeah, no Intellion. Pick, Upsetting. We have Crocodile, an OG pick by Absolute, an OG monster myself. Crocodile was a mon that I Whew. picked. I'm 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 gonna say something about. But I think I picked Crocodile. You know, I want to say six consecutive drafts back in Gen Seven leagues. This mod is phenomenal. I've so always wanted to use Crocodile. I've always wanted to use Crocodile. Um, yes. The fact that it gets two amazing abilities in Intimidate and Moxie is going to be really, really clutch to have. It's another uh, electric immunity, so I don't, if I don't always want to bring Zero or if Zero or just doesn't have a good matchup, but I want to make sure I have that electric immunity, I do have Crocodile here. Hard hitting ground and dark types are, I feel like, are very crucial yeah. in draft league format. Yep. Yeah. And also, so you pair that with a, uh, so you pair that with a stab and knockoff, a stab choice scarf, mm -hmm. moxie knockoff as well. Mm -hmm. Crocodile can come in and, and click knockoff, and pretty much take lives. As mm -hmm. so, so we, so we, if you bring Crook late game, it can, it, it, it can ninety percent of the time win it with either knockoff or earthquake. Yep, and, that's and it how just good this one is. And outside of that, it gets Shadow Claw, it gets Power Punch, gets Outrage, Stealth Rock. Stealth, Rock. Stealth Rock. So I could bring an Intimidate, bulky uh, lead set with the same to get set up rocks. Yep. It gets Iron Tail, High Horse Power, yep. uh, Dragon Coverage. Yep. Um, this thing is just Aqua Tail. Yep. This thing has a wide move pool, very bulky, yep. but very offensive. Yep. It's going to be a powerhouse, I feel like, this yep. season. And one thing I'd before we move on is uh, Crocodile also gets Anger Point. Now, if you can predict that against an Urshifu single anger point, you you can come in with a Scarf Crocodile, have it uh, have, have an anger point, live a wicked blow from an Urshifu single, and you can sweep at plus 12. Why are you bringing it up, man? Now you're just giving away the strats. No, because what? <laughs> because don't you play him week one? No. Oh, don't you? Sorry, my bad. <laughs> oh, no, I don't play week one. one. Oh, you play Aaron, no. don't you? No, I play, I play Aaron week one. That's I deal right. with that damn freaking uh, Dragon Ball. Yeah, well, well that, I apologize. But with that being said, <laughs> we'll move on to the 25th pick uh, in, in Pierce, picking up Salaby. 
picking up another mythical Pokemon here for the draft. This one's interesting. He does complete his Firewater Grass core, which is phenomenal. Does, yes, um, like that's one of the one of the cores you want to pick up. I've Celebi is one one of the ones that out of all of the mythical tier one hundred like stat one hundred Pokemon was always lackluster to me because it didn't have the wide move pool as the others did. It's, it's still very good with um, yeah. a, being a cleric. Um, can set up stealth rocks. It can be a nice bulky. It can be a sweeper. Yeah. Um, it can be a, um, slapping on a choice scarf or choice specs and just going ham with the special attack can be very, very useful. But it's just its move pool is sort of lackluster. Uh, lackluster. Yeah. Um, and because... missing out on hidden power really, I felt like her salary. Actually, uh, so, the, so I think so I'm going to boost because it now is D Gleam. I only remember getting like uh, Leaf Storm or like Kikuku Kong. Yeah, I mean, uh, the move pool is fine. I just, I feel, still feel like it's a little lackluster because there are um, yeah. Pokemon. There are, because uh, it doesn't get any real like good ground coverage for fire types. Um, so gets, fire types still it gets wall the same relatively well. It gets Earth Power. It gets Earth Power? Yeah. Now it does. Oh. I think they've All right, buffed never mind it. Then. Yeah, I, 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 I think they've buffed it. <laughs> All right. Wait, no, I was wrong. <laughs> no, it's always got Earth Power, because I remember using it back in, like, Season 9, I think. All right. Uh, G-Max, but I don't yeah. know. I, it's still not yeah. 100% like, on Celebi. Like, compared to the other one, like, Celebi's still a great mod. Yeah. Just compared to things like Mew, to uh, Jirachi, to Shaman if it was here, to Victini yeah. if it was here, um, Celebi has always been sort of that lackluster, sort of, like, not yeah. as good, but it's still a good mod. Um, yeah. And pairing it with Draco Vision and Sonora, yeah. I think, and, will be a and, very and, good here. And in saying that, so so he's so he so he's completed his Firewater Grass core, but he's also started his uh, Dark Psychic core as well. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the next pick, twenty sixth pick, we are almost a quarter of the way there with uh, Zach, and he's picked up Hydreigon. Now Hydreigon is a perfect pick to pair with Excadrill, Clefable. Very hard hitting special dragon typing. This thing will drop Draco's on you all day, every day. As long as it hits, yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Um, and Dark Pulse, saying, yeah, very hard. And in saying that, you can have your extra drill and Clefable take a Draco that is being used on on Hydreigon, also. So uh -huh. it does get U turn, so you can always, like, yeah. if you're working a toy scarf set, you can U turn exactly. out into Clefable or extra drill or whatever Pokemon you need to be able to take a hit so that you can bring in Hydreigon back out later to be able to dish out harder hits out. So Hydreigon exactly. is a phenomenal mine, great move pull. And I think uh, having that levitate ability and having the one Pokemon that has more breaker and extra drill to ignore that is very good. It's a great mod to him sort of block those ground type hits uh, yeah. for extra drill. So it's, it's a yeah. great pairing with this team. It is, yes. But moving on to the next pick, we have my pick. In Mamo Swine now, or oh, good old Manny, good old Manny. I was gonna snipe you so hard. I almost sniped you. So Mamo I Swine, almost took Mamo Swine. <laughs> Mamo Swine is that good for the fact he gets Ice Shard, Stealth Rock, but also in saying that, Ice and Ground Stab is so hard to find a swap in onto. Mhm. Mm it's a great offensive pairing, and the fact that it also gets thick fat, so you're able to eat up those ice yes. hits relatively well, those fire type hits relatively well. This thing oh, can yes. be bulky. But with a choice scarf, this thing is just going to yes. wreck. And I think it's a great powerhouse to pair with Bear Scudo or Corona. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, and in saying that, uh, I can also run a freeze dry Mamoswine to counter the Dracovish. Like, yep. I have done it before. Mm -hmm. I've done it before and it worked perfectly. Mamoswine yep. is it's able to take weird. out a Dracovish with no special attack investment as long as, uh, as long as it is not negative. It can take out a Dracovish perfectly. So, I'm happy with Very that. Very good. Very but, good. So Mammoth Swine is an awesome pick for me, and I'm looking forward to use it again. Second draft mm -hmm. in a row, picking it up. But moving on to the 28th pick, we have we we have Lord and his and Mandibuzz. I love this pick. I think this is phenomenal for his team. Um, I love Mandibuzz Pokemon. It's just a bulky flying type is so crucial. I feel like a lot of times in draft league format, um, getting the ability to defog away hazards is so good, especially for the help of that Arcanine. So Arcanine doesn't have to come in on South Rocks. Um, it's a great pan with Arcanine because it just ignores the uh, ground typing hit. Um, this thing is just so bulky and hard to deal with. 
is a great mon to uh, wall uh, Urshifu single strike because it is a bulky dark type to eat up those wicked blows. Um, this thing with the Rocky Helmet can do a lot of really good work against a lot of really good mods. I love Mana Buzz. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, and and what? And if you add that to a foul play, so if he, so mm -hmm. if, so if he wants to bring, uh, so if he wants to bring Flash by Arcanine, the Intimidate is not needed because he's just because he's just bringing Mana Buzz. Foul play, done, sorted. And those physical attackers are just are are just are just taken care of. Then. With a 29th pick, one away from a quarter, we have Savali for Aaron. Now, Savali is such a good pick here because it fits in so well to any draft because it gets access to parting shot and access to any typing possible. Mm -hmm. It's You cannot predict what the Savali is going to be because it can be literally anything. Yep, and in saying that, so multi attack has been nerfed by 30 base power. But in saying Thank that, God. <laughs> in saying that, it is still 135 base attack. With 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 multi attack, hmm. and that's the reason why that yes it's been nerfed, but it is still a good mod to use because you can parting shot out. You, you also get U turn. U turn yes, and also the wide move pull that it gets, it get it gets like mm -hmm. surf, thunderbolt, and all that. And even yep, outrage, ball. psychic fangs. Yeah. It can set up with iron defenses. Yep. Um, it can de defog, so it is a way of removing hazards yep. for. His team, if need be, exactly. um, this Pokemon is going to be hard. And yeah. I'm, as facing him week one, I am not looking forward to trying to figure out if he's actually going to bring it or not and figuring out what type it is because I am terrified. Yeah. But moving on to a quarter way in the draft, we have Looney and his and Terrakion for the 30th pick here. Such a great, great mod for him. I think it's just another hard hitting Pokemon to pair. It, it's a, also a very bulky Pokemon, it has great stats. Um, great typing and rock and fighting, so it has doesn't have a whole lot of weaknesses, um, but it also has a lot of ways of what would be a weakness is now resisted, like flying is now neutral because it no longer because adding that rock typing. Um, this thing is just it's so hard hitting. Choice Bandit or Choice Craft Terrakion, it's so hard to have a switch in on. I and, think this is going to pay yeah, very well yeah, with Mew and Age yeah, Slash. Exactly. And, and with Terrakion, Terrakion also gets access to, to Quick Attack as well. Yes, uh -huh. because yes, it is not stable or anything, but still, having the ability to have a priority attack is perfect because if, because say if you have something that's, that's a speed setup, you, 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 you can Quick Attack, catch them off guard, game done, sorted, you win. So it is yep. good for them. In that sense. Choice been a choice been a quick attack with a base one twenty nine attack. So that's gonna hurt. Unless you're ghost type, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But, uh, yeah, exactly. So moving on oh. to the thirty first pick, we have Azumarill with the other wheel pick. I, the one thing I will say about this draft so far is. He has great wall breakers. Azumarill, Terrakion, uh, Mew and Age Slash can be considered wall breakers. I definitely want to see a little bit more. Like he has a really good natural bulk. I definitely want to see some dedicated bulk on his team, dedicated walls for him. Um, yes. He's picking up a lot of really hard hitting, especially on the physical side. Special yes. side, you really only have Mew um, that can be, but he doesn't really have anything amazingly wall break on the special side. Azumarill is a great mod for setting up with like Belly Drum. It has uh, amazing ability and huge power. Um, giving a nice water and fairy type to hit some really good mines. But I don't know. I feel like he probably could have gone with something a little bit better than this one. Yeah. Personally. Same me, but same time. Azumarill is still a good mod. Like, uh, like uh, with Sap Sipper, huge power. Well, like. Like Azumarill can be uh, like Azumarill has a set that is toxic as so in saying yeah that, the whirlpool Paris song set yes it's exactly bleh. but I want something that would be guaranteed more of a wall for him instead yeah, of just being like it yeah. can be I want something to be like I I know, like something uh like a, a I don't know um tang growth like a bulky tang growth like that guaranteed wall on his team just be able to eat up some of these hits because it's he needs something like that on the team i feel exactly. like exactly but moving on to the 30 second pick we have caldeo picked up by aaron here now another moment of the sword of justice gone yes so caldeo picked up here is 
I would say it's interesting, I would say, but at the same time, I see why he may have done it. Keldeo speed tier, I think 107 is decent. Mm -hmm. It's above the base 100, which is what you want, because it forces the base 100 to be at max H max speed or run scarf. Um, the only thing about Keldeo, and as um, someone who I, I love all the sort of justice, I think they're sweet, um, is this move pool isn't as diverse as you would hope it to be. Yeah. Like, um, it, it, you can be run physical or special. Sometimes special, your physical attack is not amazing, but can be run physical at times. But having that 129 special attack is really good. Problem is, it's like your best moves are like, you always have a guarantee fighting a water move, but then it's like a lot of his great coverage is on the physical side, not so much the special. Like, he gets... Stone Edge, he gets um, he gets Poison Jab, uh, X Scissor, stuff like that. But that's all in the physical, with his physical attack being seventy two. Special wise, he doesn't get anything amazing besides gets, his stab moves on the special side. Uh, and he gets Icy Wind. I would say that's it. Yeah, but it's like so. It's sort of like, and so a lot of times he's probably gonna run like Calm Mind sets, um, some substitute sets probably. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what he do with it. It does get flip turn, though. That is a huge thing for this thing, though. Yes. It is a yes. huge move for Caldeo. It's flip turn to be able to just uh, get out of that being so fast. It will be able to just nice pivot into something that will be able to take a hit. So sure. that is very useful for him. It is, yes. Remember, for the 33rd pick, we have Rhyperior by Lord. Now, Rhyperior here is perfect. It gives, it gives, it gives him a rock setter. It, it allows him to take some fire type hits. Which is good, and also you can also run a rock polish weak weakness policy set here, which is also mm -hmm. good for him. The only issue that I have with this team so far, the only issue is Urshfu Rapid is not the bulkiest thing in the world. Um, so he does have a bit of a water weakness here. Doesn't have anything that yeah. really wants to take a powerful water type hit from something like a Keldeo. Yeah. Um. So that's something that he's going to hopefully have to fix in his draft. But I think yeah. Rapierior having a lightning rod ability is really good because that does mean so that, uh, outside of just being a ground typing, um, it definitely just takes away from those electric type hits. Base 130 defense, 140 attack is so good. Has a really good move pull with Avalanche, uh, Fire Punch, um, Poison Jab, Outrage, Mega Horn, Shadow Claw. Has a phenomenal physical move set. So if you are able to set up with this thing, it's going to hurt, yeah, or you can be a exactly. more bulky stealth rock setter, and that'll still be perfectly good. But yeah. I'm hoping to see something to cover his bit of a water weakness he has right now. Yeah, exactly. So um, what would we do? Uh, a water absorb user, such as uh, Maractus, would be perfect. Doesn't It doesn't double up on water types, but also gives him a, a grass type to finish, finish off thing, which is good. Mm -hmm. But moving to the 34th pick, we have myself, and we picked up the rain in Palapa. Now the best rain setter in the format, or well, one of the two. Unfortunately, it's better. I, me personally, I prefer uh, Politoed, but Pelipper is just a better one because it does add that flying typing. It uh, has really good speed tearing. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't know 65. Sorry, I was thinking it was faster than that. But uh, it is just a really good, uh, just somewhat speedy. Like it could be a speedy flying type if you want it to be, but. Having things like Hurricane, Roost, uh, U-Turn, Tailwind, uh, all that type of stuff. But the big thing about it is having Drizzle for your Bear Skewda is going to be hard for people to try to deal with. Um, now, it will say it does make that your Volcarona isn't going to hit as hard on the fire type uh, side if you do have the rain up. So but it's a little... But in saying that, you don't need the fire typing with it. Because Volcarona no. gets access to Hurricane. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Besides, if you don't want to run the Fiery Dance, you uh, yep. you do get Hurricane, which is going to be 100% accurate in the rain. Yep. So but it's a so weird, weird nambo, weird combo side yes, of deal with because Volcarona. Because Volcarona also has access to Bug-type moves, which is super effective against the Grass-type attacks. That's very true. Of both types, I should say. So I will say the only thing on your team that you have to deal with, uh, if you have the rain up, bulky steel types, like a flying steel type is going to do while you relatively well. Yes. So that's something you want to die for. Yeah, exactly. But so next up on the thirty fifth pick we have Zach picking up Rotom Heat here. Now I've stuffed up the name of Rotom Heat again. <laughs> but this wasn't 
Interesting pick. I do love Rotom Heat. It's my favorite out of all the Rotom forms. I think it's the best one in draft league format. Uh, that could be said. Rotom washes, but I think Rotom Heat, especially currently this generation, Rotom Heat is a lot better. Yes. Um, but in saying that, I don't agree. I don't agree with it on this team because he's because he's taken away two Levitate users, which extra drill runs a house on. Yeah, it is a weird uh, thing. It's like you could say, okay, he drafted two levitates. What's the best thing to get around uh, to stop them from using mobile? You guess me. Let me take extra drills. Yeah, so that is true. It's I, I can understand why he drafted these two and I, uh, two levitate mods, and that's totally fine. And he took away the best mold breaker so that he can draft these two and not have to worry about it. Mm. Um, being having the road and heat extra drill pairing, I think is phenomenal. Um, and just the, having the pivot. With Volt Switch having the defog, having um, Willowis coverage being he can be physical, being physical defensive or special defensive with this thing, it's going to be very very good. Um, definitely have to watch out for this one. Um, Hydreigon is the only thing that really wants to hit uh, take a hit from a water type attack, but Hydreigon isn't the most bulkiest in the world, and a lot of water type uh, Pokemon do run uh, ice type coverage. So exactly. hopefully he does pick up something that can like a bulky water type to pair with this Rotom Heat. So that it doesn't have to worry about those water type hits. Yeah, the 36th pick, uh, maybe halfway into the fourth round, we have Pierce Jiggin Klefki. This is weird. Yes. I, I don't know this. I, I'm never a fan of Klefki. I understand. Oh, prankster screens. Yeah, Neat. That'd be, the, that'd be the only reason why I see he's drafted on this team. Yeah, because for screens with Dracovish is very good. Yes. Um, But I feel like there are better screen setters out there. I honestly do. Klefki doesn't get Tailwind, does it? I can check real quick. I don't know if it, no, did. it, it doesn't. didn't in the past. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Um, but the only thing Klefki... So, Klefki gets spikes. That is, a, that is a huge thing. Having the Prankster spikes so that spikes. it guarantees gets rid of all focus yeah. dashes and stuff like that. So, Dracovish yeah. does one-shot things. It, I will say it's a very good thing for yeah. him. It does it, get Prankster yeah. T-Wave. It also has the... It all pranks the switcheroo and T and T wave as you said. So, so and also so, has prankster defog as well, which is something yes. his team needed. Was a hazard removal as well. So, so. I see, yeah. So I see why he's drafted. But at the same time, I would have preferred him to draft a bulkier theory type on this team. Hundred percent, or a bulkier steel type. Yes. And like, and like if you wanted Klefki, probably could have came maybe like yeah a few rounds down the line. Yeah. It probably didn't need to be fourth yeah, pickle. Exactly. So, so Klefki is a good mon, but it's a good mon if if paired as a double typing mon. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Moving on to the thirty seventh pick, we have absolute. We have absolute, and he's going for the Haxorus. Now, the Haxorus here on this team uh, provides the mold breaker. Uh, Haxorus gets Moxie, doesn't it? Uh, I believe he does. No, no, he doesn't. He gets no, no, no. Iron, no. Yeah, but I've been saying that. So he, so he gets mold breaker. Yeah. So, so, uh, so against a team like Zax, perfect mon for it. Uh, yep. He ignores all abilities, and at the same time, uh, Haxorus gets get Dragon Dance. Mm -hmm. Having set up, run the Lumberry on it. It's perfect. It gets a great priority move that just he just got uh, this generation and first impression. Yes, um, a base well. 90 bug type hit to hit those bulky uh, grass types is going to be very, very good to have. Has a phenomenal move pool. Um, it does give me another strong physical attack to pair with Crocodile, but I think both of these pairs of being sort of physical wall breakers is going to be very, very good this season. Um, and it gets it gets roar, it gets uh, taunt, it gets toxic. This mod is going to be a lot. Uh, they're never going to know what exactly is going to be on this thing. They know it's probably going to be either a scarf set or a dragon dance set a lot of the times, but I feel like I can probably find some cheeky ways to make Hacktress work, but I just, I've just i seen Hacktress used so much in the past of being just yeah. a hard-hitting wall-breaker dragon type yeah. that was only being pure dragon. I don't only weaknesses I have is dragon, ice, and fairy, and so far my coverage is, for the least of, for some of it, I have. The only yeah. thing right now is I need some coverage for the ice typing, and then I'll be fine. Yeah. So, but the last time, oh, the last time I faced Haxorus, I got six would in a finals match. So, but bring me over that. But the one thing I want to see from you, I would love to see you draft a dedicated special attacker. 
Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's the plan. That, that's one thing you need to draft you because you have your Scammer, Crooked Elf, Hexorus, and also and also their aura. All of those. I mean, their aura is a guaranteed yes. special attacker with yes. the, but it yes, is it more is. physical than special. So I'm so you it, want I you want to see me have draft a wall breaker special attacker. Yes, basically because all four of those types are primary physical attackers, and that mm-hmm. and that's one thing because yes, their aura can be run especially, but. Yeah, but moving on to the 38th pick, we have the Brickrack and Crocodiles at BBK with Togekiss. Drafting a perfect counter to the Ashiku single strike here. And just to, yep. uh, and also another para flinchmon as well. Yep. Uh this thing is a phenomenal mine. Uh getting that defog. It's it can be an either an annoyance bulky set. It can also be a very uh offensive special attacker. Uh, does get Tailwind to set up to make sure that things, uh, some of his Pokemon will outspeed some of these faster mines. Um, I think Tox- Togekiss is a phenomenal pick for him. The only thing he has to watch out for is that extra drill. Extra drill with the right coverage can destroy all his team so far. Yeah. So Sorry. that's something he has to watch out for. But other than that, I think his team looks really good. Yeah. And adding this Togekiss here is a very nice coverage for him. It is, sure, yes. But moving into the 39th pick, we have the Rock City Tyranitars. With Chansey, yeah. Chansey's a good one, but to pick it up in a 20-minute <laughs> format is... I will say, I faced a Chansey recently, and uh, let's... let's Spoiler alert, but I broke my keyboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, gonna say. I love Chansey's Pokemon. I think this is an awful pick for this team. Yes. Um, mainly for the fact that he only has one Pokemon that wants to eat up a knockoff, and that is Tyranitar. Um, Mel Metal, Mimikyu, and Chansey, especially Chansey, does not want to take knockoffs. So if you have and a dedicated, strong that, knockoff user, yeah, and saying that, and saying that he also adds to his fighting weakness. He does, and well, right now he has one are, immunity in yeah, Mimikyu. Yep, yeah, exactly. Three with four mons are super effective to fighting type, and in saying that, most fighting types get Iron Head as well. Mm-hmm. Or knockoff. Or, or, yeah, or not knockoff poison jab, like, like in saying that. Mimic is a good pick to counter fighting types, but at the same time, when you have three months that are weak to fighting, you then need to start thinking about other ways to stop fighting types. And because, I'm I'm just hoping yeah. he finds something because he needs it on this team right now. It's not looking yes, good. <laughs> for sure. But moving on to the wheel pick here, a third way through the draft, we have High picking up Noivern. Yeah, Noivern here, uh, Hurricane, Draco. Boom burst. It's the mon that can just hit hard. I love this pick. Um, having the infiltrator ability to get through, um, like light sc- reflects, Disguise. light screens, aurora veils, substitutes. It's phenomenal. Frisk to figure out what your opponents are running. Um, for item wise, it gets a wide move pool. Um, you get some moonlight to be able to recover back off, so you don't have to always run a roost. You do get moonlight, so you don't have to lose my- your uh. Uh, flying typing does get U-turn. It gets uh, switcheroo. It gets outrage, uh, dark pulse, uh, defog, which is something that he sort of won on his team. Was he needed something way of getting rid of hazards right now? Yeah. Um, I think this Pokemon is phenomenal. I think it's really really good. And just good. having that base speed of one twenty three, he needed on the team because the team was very slow at this point. Um, his fastest Pokemon, I believe, was Jirachi at this point. So yeah. adding Noivern in here. Increases his speed here phenomenally. I think it was a great pick for, for sure. But maybe one of his next pick here is he's gone for Tangrowth here. It adds a bulky grass type, it adds a leech seed, it also adds a regenerator to his team. So, yeah, I, I've been using Tangrowth in the PCL. I think it's a phenomenal mod. It is a little weak on the special side. Um, so, a lot of times you feel like you have to run a soul fest just to be able to eat up a hit on the special. Yeah. Um, but he has one of the best mods that. Uh, that wants to that can deal with Tangrowth and Noivern. Noivern yes. Hurricane can destroy Tangrowth. So having both and Noivern and Tangrowth on the same team makes it so that one last Pokemon Tangrowth has to deal with as a special flying type. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think Tangrowth is a phenomenal Pokemon. You can run Rocky Helmet set, especially. I, this is, I did that, spoiler. I did that in the past with uh, um, Melmetal. I ran a Rocky Helmet Max Defense Tangrowth. Like cool. I'm gonna wall you and just click Earthquake. Like, yep. 
Exactly. Bruh, <laughs> it, it's a great mod. I feel like he, he is pairing this with a Sylveon, who is a more special defensive wall than physical. I think Tangrowth and Sylveon will have a very good defensive core together. Yeah, for sure. But moving on to the 42nd pick, we have Reuniclus. He's gone for an, another bulky mod. <laughs> That's weak to knock off. Yeah, I will say it is resistant to his fighting weakness. It is. So that's something. It is, but at the same time, most fighting types get knock off. It's like, bruh. Um, and his team is very, very slow. Very yes. slow. So he has so added I'm... a trick room element with Runicliff. So that's could be what he's trying to go for. And if he does, if that's how it turns out to be, watch out for trick room. It's going to be terrifying. Yes. Um, but Runicliff is a phenomenal model with Regenerator. Um, with Magic Guard, um, the ability to set up relatively well behind the substitute with Calm Mine. Um, I've seen like uh, like just such a phenomenal move pool with Reuniclus and different ways of setting up with it. It can be terrifying to fight against if it's paired on the right team. And right now he has a lot of weaknesses that Reuniclus shares that he doesn't have the right coverage for Reuniclus to be able to make Reuniclus work the best. So, hoping he can fix it with the Rainer's Rift. Yes, exactly. So, there's hope for him yet, but we shall see in the upcoming picks. But moving on to the 43rd pick, we have uh, BBK and choosing Grim Snarl. Going for uh, the screen. Oops. Going for the screen. Yep, it's very good. He needed the screens because so far, his team wasn't exactly... It, it's sort of frail for the most part. Um, like, really Boom and Toxicity have some good natural bulk to them. Um... But overall, he was definitely lacking some real, like, especially true physical bulk on his team. So getting something like Grimstyle to set up field, to set up Reflex and stuff like that is definitely going to be very crucial for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and just being able to get Prankster Taunt, Prankster T-Wage, Prankster Toxic, stuff like that off on his opponent's team is going to be very crucial. It does add a secondary fairy typing um to his team so that's just something to watch out for um his he doesn't have anything that really wants to take like a hard hitting physical poison jab like toxicity theoretically can but th- toxicity sort of frail so hopefully he picks up maybe a bulky steel type or something like that to be able to eat up or bulky ghost type to be able to eat up those poison habits yeah exactly but, uh, i'm looking forward to what he does but uh moving on with the 44th pick we have primarina picked up by absolute himself so, you asked for a bo- you asked for a did, special wall breaker. Did, yeah, you got yeah, it. <laughs> I'm glad to see it. And with Primarina's ability, what is it? Uh, sparkly liquid voice. Liquid voice. Exactly. Liquid voice. It. Yes. So I am a big VGC player. I love VGC, and I ran Primarina in VGC. Got it took helped me get all the way to Master Ball rank in VGC uh, for Series Four, and I love Primarina so much. Having that 124 special attack, 116 special defense, and 80 HP. This thing is gonna be pretty much a great special defensive Pokemon for me, because that was one thing I was sort of lacking. Skarmory was my physical wall, while Primarina was going to be possibly my special wall. Um, They both are weak to Electro-typing, but I do have Crocodile and Zeraora, which are immune, and Haxorus, which is uh, resisted to it. So I felt like Primarina was a great pairing with the rest of my team. uh, I finished my Fairy Dragon Steel Core with Haxorus, Skarmory, and Primarina. Now I'm starting my Firewater Grass Core here. Yeah. I think Primarina is a phenomenal mon, great move pool, and I think this thing is gonna deal some massive hits if people are yes. not gonna be able to. If I run like a choice back on Primarina, people are not gonna be able to take yeah. it from it. Uh, Primarina fits fits in so well with Steam, so I look forward to where the rest of your draft leads. But moving to the forty fifth pick, we have Pierce picking up Alakazam here. Now he's this gone, was an interesting one. He's gone for the double psychic. Yeah, um, this was a bit, very interesting pick here. Um, I don't know why he just didn't pick Alakazam up over Celebi in the first place. Yeah. Um, that would make more sense to me. But he probably just wanted to complete his Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Maybe his Fire his Firewater Grass Core. Yeah. Um, but Alakazam is a great mod in itself. I'm just not sure how his team is going to pair with it. Um, because any you can't switch into Celebi on a Dark type when you're trying to protect Alakazam. And Klefki isn't exactly the bulkiest thing in the world. So, um, mm. I mentioned see how the rest of his draft goes, but Alakazam itself, hard-hitting special attacker, very fast mine, um, great move pool. This thing is gonna is is a threat in itself. But we it gotta is, see how well it, it uh, pairs. But I would just like to see some more dedicated bulk on this team. 
hundred percent. His team is very yeah, frail. Like, <laughs> Besides, like Celebi is his best yeah, thing. Like I would say, if you can get up plus one on any mon, it can probably take down this team fairly easily towards towards late game. So, yep, I agree with that. So I agree with that. Moving on to forty six pick, we have Zach picking up Decidueye. Now, Decidueye this is a phenomenal is pick. Here with extra Drake of Abel, Hydreigon, Rogue to make Decidueye. This is looking like an OU team right here. This is a phenomenal pick. Uh, long reach um, makes it so that you don't can ignore Rocky Helmets, Iron Barbs, stuff like that, which is phenomenal for this thing because this thing is such a physical attacker. Um, it gets a, an amazing move in um, Spirit Shackle to prevent your opponent from switching out. So if you get in a bulky water type with this Decidueye, you can just guarantee you're going to take out this damn bulky water type. Yeah. Um, I love Decidueye as a pick. I think it's really good for his team. Great move pool. Um, gets a uh, n- another U-Turner to pair with the rest uh, with Hydreigon, and you have a Volt Switcher and Rotom Pete. He has and Teleport with Clefable. You have such great just switching around of your team. It's mm-hmm. going to be very hard to know to try to predict when he's going to be switching out when he's staying in. Yeah, exactly. So uh, and a Defogger, another yes. Defogger for his team. <laughs> yes, right here, just... Hazards will never be on the side of the field ever. Yes, if he if if he can pick up a bulky water here, he is. Goated with the team, just in six picks. Yeah. Something um, like Vaporeon will be very good for this team. Yes, I'm looking forward to what he does. But next up, we have myself picking up Helio Lisk. Now Helio Lisk, it's, it's <sighs> spicy for the team. It's spicy. I'm gonna say. But what are your thoughts? Um, I really like Helios for this team mainly because you picked up the Pelipper. If you didn't pick up the Pelipper to set up the rain, I would have been like, okay, you're just fast electro type. Sure. Yeah. Um, being the 109 speed, 109 special attack, it's really good. But the fact that you have it in range, so you have those guaranteed thunder hits for Heliwitz is very good. But also, dry skin is such a phenomenal ability. It makes it that you're healed uh, by by the rain is so, so good. Um, I think that's a phenomenal thing. It has such great move pool, having a Volt Switcher, but also a U-Turner. That's the thing that people forget is that this thing also gets U turn. Yeah. Um, so that you don't always have to run Volt Switch if you know you're going against, like my team who has a uh, Zero and a Crocodile possibly on it. You're not going to want to run Volt Switch on this thing. You're probably going to run U turn just so you won't get trapped. Yeah. So I, I think this Healy West is a phenomenal pick for your team, especially pairing it with the Pelipper. Uh, I think it's going to, your team is looking terrifying. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because uh, I have got some comments that it's pretty shit from other players, so I'm just glad to hear that. <laughs> I, I like this team so far. Like I said, I don't like Pelipper as a Pokemon. Not saying it's bad, I just don't yeah. like it because I think it, it's a toilet bird. But, yeah, I don't um, like it, so I, but it's good for rain. <laughs> and the fact that it's a, a very hard-hitting uh, special attacking normal types with Hyper Voice, yeah. I ran Drampa before with the choice specs in VGC, and it destroyed things. Yeah. So this thing is going to be very hard to switch in on. Unless you're a ghost type, Yeah, it's going to be hard to switch in on this thing. And you get great covers like Surf on here in the rain to deal with ground types. Yeah. And moving on to the 48th pick, pick we have Jolteon picking up a counter to my healer list here with Jolteon. So Jolteon here fits well, I would say. It's... A does, great pickup for him. Yes, it is because it uh, does give an uh, an extra electric immunity to the extra mm-hmm. rapid and rapirial, and it also does give him quick feet to 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 be the second fastest possible one in the game. Yep. The only problem with adding Jolteon to his team, he has one immunity to ground. That is it. He has no resistances or anything. He has three Pokemon, which one of them is four. Sorry, no. All three of them are just. Weak yeah. to ground, and Urshifu Rapid doesn't really want to take an earthquake from like an extra drill. Yeah. Um, so he might want to pick up something like a bulky grass type or something like that to try to eat up a uh, um, some more earthquake hits or more ground type hits. But overall, I think Jolteon is just it adds speed to his team, which is he desperately needed. His team was becoming relatively slow, which Arcanine being I'm uh, sorry, Urshifu Rapid at base 97 with his fastest thing, he needed something over base 100. So, yeah, exactly. um, I think Jolteon was a great pickup for him. I think it's really what he needed for his team. Yeah. Moving on to 49 pick, we have we have Obstagoon picked up by Aaron here. Now, Obstagoon is an amazing mod. 
Uh, at Obstagoon. Obstagoon is the best. With, uh, with what? With, uh, with Obstruct. Guts. Knockoff. Uh, facade as well. Like, this mod, it's... if paired well with speed tears, it can do some damage. It has a phenomenal move pool in having um, some, like, Ice Punch. Uh, it gets, like I said, Knock Off. It gets Seed Bomb. It gets Shadow Claw, Stopping Tantrum, uh, Thunder Punch, X Scissor. Uh, it gets a phenomenal move pool. Um, it, like I said, it gets Guts. It also, it gets Defiant. Yes, so if you want to prep well. for the Sticky Webs, you want to prep for the Intimidate Mines, stuff like that, Obstacle can be very good. My only real issue with Obstagoon, especially on this team, is um, it just feels out of place because he also has Ferrothorn, so it's another fighting type weakness. Um, so while I can find a way to get around it because it's any typing and Dragapult, it's, it's Dragapult, it's ghost typing, but I don't know. Something about Obstagoon just seems a little awkward on this team, but... He could make it work really, really well with everybody else he drafts. I'm interested to see how it works. I don't know much about Obstagoon. I never really used it much, so I don't know how good it is. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Obstagoon is good, uh, and with Savali, he he can essentially have two ghost types, so we yeah. can stop his fighting weakness. But moving on to the That's wheel pick, true. to have Looney with the wheel pick here, have picking up Torkoal here, going for the fire aspect on his team. <sighs> I don't know why he picked it up so early. Yeah. It's like, a great pick. I love Torkoal. Yeah. It probably could have... It's come a lot later, and he probably would have been fine. Well, yeah, because um, what, what? You look at... There's, there's two sand team possibilities. There's a, there's a water team possibility. Well, no, mm -hmm. there is one. So to pick up fire, uh, I don't see anyone else looking for fire at the moment. I didn't see anyone at this point was trying to build a sun team, so I was like, Torkoal probably could have gone a couple rounds later, and he probably could pick something else that might have benefited in the sun better. I would have said round eight. Fair. Could've I would totally have been fine. Yep, that that's Tor totally fair. Torkoal also gets rocks and rabbit spin, doesn't it? Yep, it uh, does get both of those. Um, like Torkoal itself is a phenomenal mod. I just feel like it got picked up a little too early. Yes. I definitely would have picked it up later, but I do love Torkoal as a mod, I think. It adds a little bit more bulk to his team, which what he needed. He did need some bulk for his team. Now he needs something to eat up these ground-type hits, because right now he has Terrakion, Aegislash, and Torkoal. Any strong-hitting ground-type, or just a mod that can learn Earthquake, is going to wreck this team. Yep. So hopefully he picks up something either with Levitate or ideally something more with Flying to pair with this so that uh, he doesn't have to worry too much about the ground coverage. Exactly. But moving on to the 51th pick, uh, the other wheel pick, uh, we have Looney picking up Venusaur here. Covering the I... ground type, but also not covering it because uh... of the poison weakness. Yeah, it's a neutral hit to pair with like Mew and the Zoom Roll. Um, I love the pick with Torkoal because it does allow um, yes. him chlorophyll boost and i did lose to that to a g max venusaur didn't have chlorophyll but i did lose to a g max venusaur in the sun with growth um in the pcl so it this thing is terrifying i love venusaur i prefer venusaur with the other two gen one starters personally uh charlotte's overrated but um i think venusaur is a phenomenal pick it does complete his fairy water i mean his fire water grass core um now he just needs a dragon type to finish his fairy dragon steel core um I think Venusaur is a great pick, but again, like we said, it doesn't fix his ground type weakness. Yeah. It just makes another mine that doesn't want to take one, even neutrally, doesn't yeah. want to take your ground type hit. Exactly. But moving on to the 50 second pick, we have a uh, Galarian Weezing picked up by Aaron, and it helps with that fighting weakness you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. It does phenomenally being a four times resistance. Um, it does give him sort of similar to what we're dealing with um, with uh, Looney's team. He doesn't have anything that wants, to, besides possibly a Savali flying um, or a Savali grass, nothing really wants to eat up a ground type hit on his team yet. Yeah. Um, so hopefully he does pick up some flyers, something like that to try to handle that. Um, but the biggest thing about Galarian Wisdom that's so good is the neutralizing gas. 
Um, now he could run Levitate, and that means like, hey, cool, no more ground type weakness. But then, but neutralizing gas is such a phenomenal ability, and Mold Breaker is still a thing. So, yes, exactly. um, I Galarian is a great pickup. It's defog. Um, it's a if he runs um, uh, non Levitate runs his uh, neutralizing gas. It is a grounded poison type to eat up toxic spikes, which is very crucial. Um, yeah. But yeah, he needs unless he's rocking a levitate on it, he definitely needs something to be able to eat up those ground type hits because it's sort of becoming a bit of a problem on his team. Yes, sure. But moving on to the fifty third pick, we have we have, we we have Jake or Lord Cat I swear he's counter drafting me. Like picking up the King <laughs> and the Jolteon, like he's counter drafting me. And but whether we said he's pursued King Kingdra is good here. Yes, it does not have a rain on the team, and it does double up on a water typing, but it does give him that dragon type. And if there is a rain team, he is able to bring the swift swim and take advantage of it. But also, don't forget that Kingdra gets sniper, but uh, mm-hmm. and and also focus energy. Yep, uh, I will say, when we were drafting this, I did not think you were the rain team. I thought he was, <laughs> even when you had to drop the pallet per pick. I still consider this team the true rain team because of the. First Fruit Rapid in the rain, Jolteon and Kingdra yeah. all being in the rain. Yeah. Uh, like and it, it's, also, it's terrifying. We and uh, also also you can also add Scale Shock onto Kingdra and get that plus mm-hmm. one speed boost. And imagine that with Sniper. You are hitting two to five times, critting every time with Sniper. And then and then you can also add. What does that move on to? That you you have plus one speed, and you can essentially take out anything that is that is that is in your way. Now the one thing that people will say, oh, but Kingdra, the just bring a bulky grass type, and Kingdra's fine. Nah, man, Hurricane in the rain. <laughs> Kingdra learns Hurricane. Yes, yes, <laughs> like yes, exactly. And also, and also, if there is no rain, I speed crit. Like, exactly. It's insane. Like, this thing yeah. has such phenomenal coverage. Um, and the fact that you can run a physical, too. You don't have to run it special. Yes, exactly. It's literally 95 for most of his stats and does yes. get Dragon Dance. So you could run a Dragon Dancing Kingdra physical and, and just wreck somebody. And it also gets flip turn as well. It does, which is uh, so many of these mods getting this flip turn uh, move yeah. from the Alabama Armor DLC yeah. is so good. It is. But moving on to the 54th pick, we have myself picking up Bronzong here. So jealous. So jealous. <laughs> Bronzong. I paired. love Bronzong. Bronzong is amazing. It gets the screens. It gets toxic. It gets durable. It is perfect for this team, I would say. It, it's it gives me an added grand uh, re- re- uh, resistance and immunity, which is perfect. Uh, and if the and if I want to face a mold breaker, I can easily run heat proof because there is not many heat proof mold. Well, no, there is not many fire type mold breakers around. If not, there are ne- there there are none at all. So it is perfect. It helps me a lot, and it's yep, just a mod that I'm looking forward to use. Being heat proof in the rain. You're gonna be eating fire type hits so well. Yeah. Um. It you don't ever have to worry about a fire type hit. It does get stealth rocked. It gets um trick room. So if you didn't want to decide to bring um uh the rain this week, you could bring some like l- slower Volcaronas and Mammoth Swines, more bulkier sets, and try to run trick room with those. Yeah. Um. It does get the screens like you say. It gets iron defense and body press. So you could do a setup sweep with this bronze on. Yeah. Um, and just wreck somebody with it. So I love Bronzong. I've used it in the past multiple times. It's one of my favorite steel types to ever use. Um, and I'm just jealous that you got it because I love it. Yep. And it's a, so Bronzong can also use Steamroller to 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 be able to get rid of any terrain, but it can also use Expanding Force on Psychic terrain. So it has the ability yep. to be used in terrain also, which we shall mm-hmm. see if I if if I go up or not. But with the 55th pick. In the NBA draft, we have the Chicago, we have Gigalith for Zach. Yeah, the Pokemon that whenever I draft Extra Drill, and uh, that was one thing that I changed because I didn't draft Extra Drill on the PCL, I tr- uh, did a free action uh, trade for it. I went and picked up Gigalith along with it. I feel like even though Tyranitar is the better Sandsetter form uh, in OU, and 
draft league, Gigalith, I feel like it's a better one just because it's a more value pick for later on that can pair with extra drill so you can use some of your other points and pick up something else to fill in over Tyranitar. Um, yeah. I think Eagle with the sweet setting up rocks. Um, iron defensing with body press. This thing is bulky as hell. Um, being only rock typing really limits the amount of things that it's weak to. Um, and that's not neutral to I me. Mean, and also adds to more of his resistances. I think this thing is sweet. I'm looking forward to see how he pairs this with extra drill. Yeah, exactly. Eagle like, is so good. Yeah. I love, like, 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 look forward to how, to how it's used. Say with the water types, you have your hydragon deciduous. Say with the grass types, you have your rotomit. You have your you have your hydragon. Like, like mm-hmm. he's drafted his team perfectly to to counter his weaknesses for each of them. Like, I'm looking forward yep. to how Zach plays plays the rest of this draft out. I am too. Looks really really good so far. But with the 56th pick, we have Politoed drafting another rain team here to suit the Draco Vish. Now, Draco Vish and rain, as I mentioned earlier, it's a powerhouse. And Politoed here, it's very one dimensional. It's it's normally Scarf, Damp Rock, or if ran with a Trick Room, bulky, no speed. So Politoed is good here, but at the same time, it is very one. It it is a very one dimensional mod. I agree. Um, I will say, I think he sniped somebody that was drafting us Serene um, earlier, but uh, because that Kingdra would have paired great with this Politoed. Actually, a uh, bit of inside information. Uh, he, Jake L. Lord was not actually drafting Rain. He did it to counter-draft me. That's the only reason why he got Kingdra, to, to counter-draft me, essentially. Because he knew oh, I was going Rain, right. and, because, and, because he knew, and because he knew he was facing me week one. That's uh, that's pretty smart on his part. Yeah. Um, but I, I love Politoed. Um, I think it's it pairs well with this team and what he's trying to do. Um, it does again. He doesn't have too much bulk on his team. Politoed can be bulky, but it's not the most bulky thing. No, oh, excuse me, it's not the most bulky thing in the world. So yeah. I'm looking to see what he does with it. Um, and hopefully he can still pick up more bulk. But he's definitely guaranteeing that he does not have a fire type weakness on his team. Yeah. With exactly. Politoed, the right. Moving on to the 50, 57th pick, we have Amoongus by Absolute. Now, this pick here is Absolute Power. Amoongus suits so well on this team. Uh, uh, type Miners do not want to do not want to attack this Amoongus. And what with the Psychic attacks that come towards it, you crook it up. Not to mention, you also you also have the Leech Seed. You have the you have the guaranteed toxic hits like Amoongus mm-hmm. will whittle down your team to the point where you will be begging for mercy as his Haxorus and and uh, and could not come in to, to finish you off like Amoongus it's... pairs so well with this team just to be able to break teams down and then to have his top five picks to come in and just finish off essentially I love Amoongus so much. Um, it, having the ability of Regenerator to be able to switch out and gain and HP also, back. Yeah. Um, having the ability to spore things so I can put something to sleep and uh, get a free switch in and then deal with that Pokemon then. Yeah. Um, and and, and it's with spore, it doesn't affect grass types. But if you swap in a grass type, your grass type is being sludge bombed away. Like... Exactly. Exactly. I think this mod is great. 114 base HP. Uh, defense of 70 and 80, like this thing is very, very bulky. It's going to be hard for people to deal with. And it's just, I have so much coverage for it to be able to eat up the hits. Uh, Primarina covers the fire type hits, uh, while Moongus covers the electric type hits for Primarina. It just adds more electric uh, resistances to my team. Um, I, I love Moongus. I was so happy to be able to draft it. I didn't think it was going to last this long. I thought I was going to get sniped from it. Um, so my backup was Venusaur, and that already got sniped. So I was like, I really hope I got it, and Amoongus scanned at me, and I cannot wait to use it. It's going to be so much yeah. fun. We're going to hit me. Exactly. But, so, moving on to the next one, we have the 58th pick uh, in Holucha, picked up by BBK. Terrifying pick here. Yes. It oh is my God. terrifying. Pairing this with the Rillaboom and Grassy Terrain, just having that unburdened, guarantee unburdened Holucha every single game, is going to be hard for people to deal with. This is probably his best physical wall breaker to pair with Cinderace. Um it's whew, I I'm not looking forward to facing this team. Yeah, neither um, am I like it, yeah. it feel like he's just going straight offense for the most part. Like his team is yeah. very offensive. 
Um, so if you are able to wall his team and dwindle his team down, that's great. Um, that's sort of the way you sort of have to try to beat this team because right now he does not have much bulk on his team as mm-hmm. much. He has Rillaboom and Togekiss can be bulky in Grimmsnarl, but Grimmsnarl with screens to set up before Halucha with Unburner comes in, uh, Halucha sword dances, it's just game over. Yep, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. It it's is just like, like, and with the brain, it's just, it's just perfect for Lucha. It's just perfect. But moving on to the 59th pick, we have Vaporeon here, and he's just a more bulk. <laughs> Choose more bulk. better play land timer, or else I'm going to crack it against him. Like, uh, <laughs> like, 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 I get it. This team in a normal 60 minute timer, perfect. It can windle, it can, it can break down teams, perfect also, but still. He hasn't covered the fighting type weakness enough yet. He does not. Like, it's a great... I love Vaporeon. Having the wish support for his bulky team right now is very good with Reunion Close, Mount Metal, Tarantar. Bringing a wish on these guys is going to be very, very crucial. Um, But, like you said, he sort of needs that fighting type resistance or something besides just Mimikyu. Because once Mimikyu goes down... Any just hard hitting fighting type like the Urshifu's, like um, pretty much anything that's just a hard hitting that has fighting type coverage, is just gonna wreck this team because a lot of times they're gonna have the dark coverage as well. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, so Vaporeon is good here, but at the same time, it's probably not the smartest pick he could have done. But I hope he fixes it up later in the draft. But moving on to the wheel pick, uh, we have uh, high picking up Araquanid and also Sandilla. So if you want to talk about that, absolute. Yep. Uh, so the uh, I think the Raquinid and the Chandelure are phenomenal picks here. Uh, a Raquinid mainly pairs very well with this team because the water bubble ability for this thing is so powerful to eat up those fire type hits, um, which he was sort of having dif- difficulties with. Um, having the Jirachi and the uh, Tangrowth not want to take those fire type hits, and Noivern, who isn't the most uh, bulkiest Pokemon in the world, he didn't have anything that really wanted to eat up the fire type hits, which also pairs well with the Chandelure, who does get flash fire. So he really did a great job of pairing both these two together. Arachnid being just one setting up the webs for his team is going to be very, very crucial because that means Jirachi, Urshifu, um, and a offensive Sylveon will be able to outspeed a lot of, even Chandelure will be able to outspeed a lot of other Pokemon. Um, I think this thing is very, very good having the uh, a very hard hitting water and bug typing, but also being very bulky is going to be very crucial for him. Talking about Chandelure now, I think Chandelure is a phenomenal Pokemon. Um, I think it's so hard hitting on the ghost side, so hard hitting on the fire side. Um, it can be a fast will wisp setter. It's, this thing is very, very good. I think it pairs well with this team. Um, but. The Rackmanid did help with his ground typing weakness. Tangrowth helped with it. But still, he needs, I feel like, something else to be able to um, uh, sort of eat up those ground type hits a lot better. Um, because once Tangrowth goes down and Rackmanid goes down, if he didn't, like, bring, it's going to be very rare he's going to bring Noivern, and Tangrowth and Rackmanid together. And then you have Chandelure and Jirachi being very, and, and, uh, being very weak to ground typing. You have Sylveon and Urshifu single, uh, single strike being neutral to ground. So I have to watch out for that. Um, he doesn't have a ground typing yet. Um, so Tangrowth is his only real way of eating up electric type hits. So Pokemon like Zeraora and Heliosk and Jolteon are going to put in a number on this team. So I'm sort of hoping that he's going to be able to draft a uh, something to eat up the electric type hits next. Yeah, exactly. Moving on to the 62nd pick. We have uh, Zoroark with Roxy Torrent Tower. Now, Zoroark here is a perfect mon for this team, I'd say. Perfect, perfect mon for this team. No bulk. It's not bulky. Yes, it's no, not no, 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 but not in saying that. With, uh, with its ability Illusion, this mon, but at the same time, per- perfect fit for the team, but also bad fit for the team because it adds an extra fighting type weakness to the team. Yes. But at the same time, Zoroark can come in and appear as one of the bulky mons. So you then sit there and go, okay, I I now need to break this team. <laughs> I now need to break it down. So say if he brings in, let's say the Chansey. 
oh no, the Zoro can chance you, and you want to go for a psychic type attack, you are then stuffed, the Zoroa can then get up a nasty plot, sort of done. Zoroark is now in a prime position to 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 be able to deal some heavy some heavy da- some heavy damage to your team. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I still feel like he definitely needs um uh because even Zoroark doesn't want to take a hard hitting knockoff from a very powerful yes. like physical attacker. So he still needs something to cover that uh that knockoff weakness. Yes. Um because even if he does lead with he leads with Mimikyu, Chansey, or Reuniclus. Um, as a Zoroark illusion, if so one of those in the back and Zoroark's front, I'm just flicking knockoff, and he doesn't want to stay in with Zoroark because that's going to hurt. And then you can't switch into other Pokemon because then they don't want to take a knockoff. So yeah. it's it's very interesting Pokemon to uh, to draft here. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly. It's, it has great coverage and does give him something that's not bulky that can hit very hard. But I still feel like he needs something else to cover his knockoff weakness. Oh, he does for sure. Like Evan saying that. Lock of wings and, and also fighting wings because because Zor- Zorok is perfect for it, barring the first pick. If he did not pick up Tarantar okay. and got Zorok, I would be happy with this pick 100%. But the fact that he has two dark types added mm-hmm. onto an already heavy fighting weakness team, it's just something. It's just something I'm not a massive fan of. But moving on to the 63rd pick, we have uh, BBK picking up Charizard here. Now, Charizard here. Decent, but it adds an extra flying. It it adds a triple flying type. And with yeah. there being no ground type picked up yet, and him only having a uh, Rillaboom, is a big problem. I oh, agree. Oh, I, I don't. Uh, There's also another Pokemon that's not that bulky, so he's not really having much bulk on his team. Like, and in saying that, I don't know. Charizard is only decent with on. On a Sun Team with Solar Power, and with there being yeah. and with there being only what nine tails left in the team, and him already having two Fire types with Cinderace and Charizard, he's kind of kicking himself in in the ass here. And the other problem that I'm seeing is that he also doesn't have much hazard removal. Um, his best yes. hazard removals don't want to come in on South Rock in general. Well, yeah. So he needs a bulky rapid spinner. Maybe like um, if John Fan was around, I was a John Fan would have been perfect for this team. Yeah. Um, but like if he was able to draft extra drill over Rillaboom, yeah, this team would be phenomenal. Like um, one thing I'm seeing is what uh, so we have a hazard removal is basically Cinderace, Tokyo's, Holucha, Charizard. All take like twenty five percent from rocks minimum. Exactly. That's my that's my concern. He needs something they can rapid spin. That's not going to take like a hit on top would be phenomenal for this team yes. because it's bulky and it will resist the right uh, right type hits and then you can rapid spin away. So, yeah. Uh, next pick. Yep. Sixty okay. fourth uh, pick. We have Espion picked up by Absolute. Now this pick here, perfect. It provides a magic bounce user as mm-hmm. well. So he does not need to worry about uh, hazard hazard removal as much. It also gives you a calm on user. Espion gets teleport. Uh, baton pass. Baton pass. That's what he gets. Yes, baton pass. Yes. So it can provide mo- momentum also. But just remember, es- Espion is a special hitting mon. Is it special? Mm-hmm. Is it specially bulky? Uh, it can be with ninety five special defense and sixty five yes. HP. Yes. It can so be with a couple decent, setups. Yeah. So it's, it's mainly. So the reason why I would draft to Espeon was mainly for the fact that it was, uh, it fit the 110 speed tier, which I sort of needed. I needed, I was looking at this point, I was looking to find something for my speed tiers, because my fastest Pokemon was Aurora. After that, my team was relatively slow. So I needed something to sort of find in the middle. I was trying to find some uh, tier 100s, tier 110s, maybe if I can find a tier 120, it's still around possibly. I wanted to get that speed in there. Um, but yeah. it's also just another hard hitting uh, special attacking wall, special attacking wall breaker, like Primarina um, does give me the magic bounce. So I don't always have to rely on Defog with Skarmory all the time. But granted, my team does not care about Hazard as much because um, I have Moongus for the Toxic Spice to eat up. Um, and my team isn't really weak to rocks. So um, yeah. I was sort of just like trying to plan out what the rest of my team was going to be. And I thought Espeon was a great pickup for me. It gave me the nice B tier. The nice special attacking wall breaker, like you said, it gets substitute, it gets calm mine, 
Um, great coverage moves. It does give me a wish passer as well um, with the Tom pass. So I think this mod is going to be very, very good for this team. And people are not going to like having to worry. They're going to have to think twice about bringing hazards. Every yeah, week. for sure. Moving on to the 65th pick, we have uh, Pierce picking up Ludicolo, adding to the rain team, but also and picking up a third water type here, which, which, which is the only time you would see happen on a rain team. So, worked out here. So, Swiss Swim here, picking up a pick, picking up a water grass up is perfect for this team. It allows him to be able to basically get the Swiss Swim off. He can scold. He can giga drain. He can ice beam. Like he can have coverage for days on this team. And Ludicolo in rain is just the OG essentially. It's very very good. And what's nice about it is like yeah, he drafted three water types, but his Dracovish and Ludicolo are neutral to electric type hits because of the dragon and grass typing. Yeah. So it doesn't add to his electric weakness. I would like to see him draft a ground type to have an electric immunity. Yes. Um, but he does have a secondary uh, grass typing with uh, Celebi. The only thing is powerful bug types wreck this team right now. So I feel yes. like he needs to draft something that might be able to eat up because Dracovishkin doesn't want to take a hit. Incineroar doesn't want to take a hit. Celebi definitely doesn't want to take a hit. Klefki is just, it's Klefki. Um, Alexander doesn't want to take a hit. Politoed, like, uh, from, like, uh, Araquanid lunge to a Politoed, it's going to hurt. And Ludicolo doesn't want to take a bug type hit. So I feel like he yeah. might need to drop, like, maybe a bulky ground slash ground rock type or something like that yeah. to try to eat up those bug type hits Pretty and those electric type hits. Yeah. So moving on to the 66 pick, we have Inteleon. Now, BBK could not pick up Inteleon, unfortunately, because Zach has got it here. But, uh, this pick is fitted perfectly with this team. Like, like I would have mm -hmm. to say that I would have to say that overall drafting right now, Zach would be in the lead. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely agree with that. It gives him a great speed tiering. Um, it pairs very well with his Rotom Heat and Decidueye, giving me a very powerful Firewater Grass Core. Um, Italian is not a bulky water type, so it makes it so, uh, makes people question whether it's actually going to be good or not. But as someone who used G Max Intellion in the past, even outside the G Max, Intellion is still very powerful with that sniper ability and snipe shot. Focus energy, uh, scope lens with a snipe shot is going to wreck a lot of teams. Um, because it's not G Max, uh, Water Absorb Pokemon are going to be able to come in on this thing relatively easily. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have the greatest move coverage in the world. Um, does get Ice Beam and like Dark Pulse, does get U Turn. Um, I sort of wish his uh, coverage was a little bit better, but does get Reflect and Light Screen, which people don't realize. So it can set up uh, Reflect and Light Screen as a fast um, screen setter. So that is a possibility for his team if he wants to do that. So I think it's going to be a good Pokemon for his team. Um, it does get, I think it pairs very well. I, I don't know if I want to say he's the best team overall so far, but he's definitely in the contention for at least the top two. Yes, uh, I well, I would say I would say that he's drafting the smartest, in that sense. Uh, that's fair. Drafting, he is definitely covering his bases very, very well. Yeah. So I can I can see that argument. I can see that argument. But with the sixty seventh pick, we have myself picking up picking up Reunigus. Now I like to pick here because in a rain team, it helps me cover my my electric weakness because also Mammoth Wine and Reunigus is perfect. It also gives me a spin blocker. And just a mod that has extreme defense. Oh, this defense. Uh, well, I think it's base 145 defense with Runinger, so it's amazingly bulky on the defensive side. And it, and uh, and it also adds me with a with a third rocker also. It does. I think this Pokemon is great for your team. Um, it does cover a lot of your weaknesses relatively well. Um, the one thing though is. I would like to see a little bit more hazard removal from your team so far. Um, okay. You only really have so far Pelipper with Defog. Um, so hopefully you're able to pick up some more hazard removal uh, uh, for the rest of the draft because Volcarona definitely doesn't want to deal with uh, always having to run heavy duty boots. Yeah. Um, but uh, Runerigus is a very good Pokemon being a ghost ground typing. Um, we saw that with Golurk in the past and Golurk was always on that cusp of almost being there. And I think Renarigus did get to that point of being the good ghost uh, ghost ground typing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a great pick for you. I think it's really good. Okay, so moving on to the 6th pick with uh, Lord picking up Scizor here. Now, Scizor, 
Sizzle, Sizzle is just an OG mon that just is known for hitting hard and having the priority move to hit hard with the ability technician. Like, I wish he had the rain here. If he had the rain with the Sizzle, it'd be insane. Yes, but like, unfortunately, both rain teams were, were both rain mons were, were were taken from his grasp. They were like his entire team so far now. Parents are would have been ideal if he like, and he gets still set up the rain with a couple of mods. A couple of mods do get yeah, to learn rain yes. dance. If he, uh, so if, if he can pick up a prankster rain dance mod, perfect. Exactly, his team will be phenomenal in that uh, that setup. Um, this thing gets defog, I believe, in this generation. I know it did in the past. I'm not sure if it lost yes, in this generation. It does. Um, it does get U turn. It gets priority bullet punch. Um, does get knock off. Um, it, it's such a phenomenal Pokemon. I think Scizor, I love Scizor. I loved Mega Scizor back in the day, um, which I'm hoping we get to see again at some point. But um, I think Scizor is great for his team. It covers a lot of his uh, weaknesses very well. And it does give him a Pokemon that is four times weak to fire, but he has Kingdra, Jolteon, Rhyperior, and Arcanine that can just eat up those fire types all day and every day. So it does not give him any additional weaknesses on his team. I think it's great. I think it's a great figure for him. Yeah. Moving on, we have we have Marowak for Aaron at the 69th pick here. So uh, Marowak provides him with a spin blocker. Mm -hmm. It also doubles up on his ghost typing. So uh, spin block. So rubber spin is almost non-existent against his team, as he mm -hmm. has two options to stop you and and the and two typings paired paired with those ghost types are just so versatile and diverse that can they can really cover a range of mons happening. It, it is another stealth rock user so you don't have to always rely on his other stealth rock users. Yep. Um it, the only thing is his team is relatively slow. Um except for the Caldeo and the Dragapult. Um so And the Savali. It, and the Savali. So it but the rest of his team is not exactly the fastest in the world. So it does bear the question of how you, if you can prep your speed tiers right, you should be able to handle at least the speed wise of this team. But I've played against mm -hmm. Lola Marowak a lot. I think it's a phenomenal Pokemon. Um, just like Ghost, Fire Typing, Shadow Bone, Poltergeist Ooh. now is such a phenomenal move. Mm. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, it. It's, it's uh, so good. It's, it's a naturally bulky and it's going to be a threat. People. Should not sleep on a lot of Marowak. It will be a threat for against anybody. Yeah, for sure. But moving on to the 70 pick here, the wheel pick, we have Rabombi from Looney picking up a webs user here, which is honestly great for his team. Yeah, his team was not that fast. Um, it was a rel Beside Venusaur and the, uh, with Chlorophyll in the sun, his team wasn't exactly the fastest in the world. I think his fastest Pokemon was Mew at 100 base speed yeah. um, before the Rabombi. So I think this is, and Rabombi is relatively fast, I believe. Um, yep. so I think this is a great pickup for him. Um, uh, yeah, Rabombi is 124 base speed, so it's yep. much needed speed hearing. Exactly. And also, um, and also with the ability Shield Dust as well. Mm-hmm. does get Shield Dust, which is very, very nice. And it has decent special attack in 120 and 95. Um, gets great move coverage. It is, gets a of Therapy. It gets Quiver Dance Setup. Uh, gets Tailwind. U-Turn. Um, Switcheroo. Um... Gets Roost, uh, gets Moonblast, um, it's Baton Pass. This Mon gets a very good amount of uh, move pool here. Yep. It's just relatively frail is the only problem with it. Um, so you just have to watch out for that. But I think his team is bulky enough to eat hits up for this Rebombe. I think Rebombe yep. was a phenomenal pick for him. For sure. Maybe on to the 70, 71st pick, we have Flygon here with the wheel with Looney. Now, Flygon added with webs is just perfect because mm -hmm. normally you see Flygon run Scarf typically. But mm -hmm. paired with the webs and being a Levitate user itself, it does not get affected by the webs on, on its own side. So it allows Flygon to just be able to be ran just, uh, normally. Yeah, I love Flygon as this pickup. Flygon is such a versatile mod that can be run. Um, it can be run special. It can be run physical. Um, it gets phenomenal move pools. And um, as first I impression, and as I thought, it also got Dragon Dance. Yeah, mm -hmm. well. I was gonna say it does. It does have Dragon Dance now, um, which it does get Quick Attack for priority. Um, does get Scorching Sands on the special side. Gets Tailwind, so he could set up the Tailwind for his team if you want to do that. Yeah, um, gets U turn. Gets U turn. Also. Boom uh, burst. Just, air slash. 
Yes, like Roost Ross, yes. for a yeah, bulky set. It, this this Pokemon is so good. I love Flygon in the past, and they just keep yep. adding more and more things to it just to make it better every single generation. The only thing we missed out on was getting a Mega. That was the only thing we missed out. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think Flygon's I think Flygon's perfect for his team having to levitate. It gives him finally a Pokemon that is <sighs> not weak or can actually take a hit from ground type hits because it besides Mole Breakers. It doesn't take any hits. It's levitating. So I think that's definitely yeah. what he needed for his team. So yeah. um, I thought Final Hiding was a great pickup for him. Just get a flying type and you're set. <laughs> yeah. But with that being said, so next up we have a 72nd pick. We have Ditto here. Grafted by Aaron. Now, now, now Ditto here doesn't need an explanation. Ditto is just a mod that comes in, transforms, and just does what you do. So and, annoying to deal with. So and and will 50% of the time reverse sweep you. Yeah, it's uh, you normally rock a choice scarf on it so that uh, it outspeeds yeah. whatever guarantee whatever it is that you're bringing in. Um, it's just it's Ditto is such a phenomenal pick at six points. It's such a steal um, because it can be anything you want it to be that's on your opponent's team. Yeah. So like I'm I'm going against him week one. I'm terrified to see what he mm. is what he's gonna do with it. So I'm hoping cross my fingers I don't see it, but. We'll find out. Uh, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's great for him. It definitely gives him much more diversity on his team, which he desperately needed because his team was sort of being on the physical. I would like to see a, another special wall breaker on his team or another physical. Like he didn't have. Mm. The team is very interesting. I, I want to yeah. see a little bit more from it, but um, I think the Ditto is a great pickup to see yeah. sort of pair what your opponents are doing against you. Yeah. Moving on to seventy third pick, we have a Lord picking up Comfey here. Now, Comfey is an annoying one, because with its ability uh, Triage, uh, it gets access to a Draining Kiss, Giga Drain, and just moves that have plus two priority, mm -hmm. and are just annoying, because if he gets that one Calm Mind, he is dealing damage to you, but also healing back 25% 25 of the damage that he's dealt to you, making it harder and harder to just kill him. Yeah, I've always ever since Comfy got uh, released in Gen Seven, I've never liked Comfy just because of how annoying it is to play against. Yeah, it is such a phenomenal Pokemon that it's unless you prep well for it, it can just sweep you. So it exactly you gotta have those bulky steel types, those bulky poison types, just to be able to deal with this thing. Because if uh, things like Skarmory, Corviknight, um, bulky poison types uh, like Galarian Weezing are going to wall this thing. Um, because they don't, Comfy, one thing it doesn't have is great coverage moves. Um, but if you don't have one of those mons, and he has a great mon to wall it too in Scizor. Scizor yes. is one of the best mons to wall Comfy, and he has it on his team, so it's one threat he doesn't have to worry about. Yep, exactly. Um, it's, it's a terrifying mon. I'm not looking forward to going against it. Yep. But next up, we have 74th pick. We have myself picking up Dragalgy here. Now, Dragology in the rain is absolutely amazing, I will, I, I will say. Because it gets access yeah. to Scold, it gets a, 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 it, it gets Flip Turn, it gets Adaptability, Sludge Wave, and Draco Media. Like, yeah, um, you also get Thunder, so you get the 100% yeah. Thunder in the rain. Um, I think this is a great pick. Um, I definitely like this pick of yours. Um, it's a little bit on the slow side, being base 44 speed. Um, so... Honestly, your fastest Pokemon are is Barrascuta. So your team, other than that, is relatively slow, um, which is uh, unhealy-esque. But um, if you, Volcarona to like, uh, needs to be set up, Mamoswine needs to Toy Scarf, stuff like that. But your last three picks are definitely on the slower side. But you're also on the very bulky side, uh, which is very, I think, what you need for your team. I think you need some more bulky mods to try to eat up hits. Because Dragalgy with a base 123 special defense is going to eat up some very yeah. good water type hits, very good poison type hits, very good uh, electric, electric type hits. Type as well, yeah. um, it's just it's going to eat up the hits that you need to hit up on the special type, spe yeah. special side. So I, I think Dragalgy was a great pickup for you. Yeah. So with the 75th pick, we have Gengar picked up by Zaki. Gengar, so oh. good. It's great, yeah. it's such a great speed tier for him. Such a great um, hard hitting special attacker, but they can also get have some natural bulk to them that it can actually eat up some hits that people don't realize. This thing can actually eat up some really good hits. Um, it creates amazing move coverage. It's very similar to Alexander when it comes to move coverage. It's insane. 
Um, and now it does lose the Levitate. We did lose that a generation ago. But um, it does have Cursed Body, which I have seen Cursed Body come in clutch in so many games. Where it's like, hey, cool, I'm going to hit, I'm Choice Scarf, I'm going to hit this move. Now I'm disabled. Crap. And now it changes the entire mindset and the entire uh, way the game is being played out. So I, I think Gengar's a great pickup here. It's a value pick at tier 15. And going so late, I think this is a great pickup for that. Oh, yes, 100% for sure. Like, like, like Gengar on the team is perfect. It provides him with a spin blocker as well, which is all, which is honestly awesome for this team. So it's just, so just an overall good pick for Zach. But moving on to the 76th pick from Pierce, we have all Beetle. The dual screens coming into play here now. Dual screens in the team is perfect because he has. I mean, he already had that with Cluffy. Well, this, yes. I feel like this is redundant. So I was going to add, uh, it's 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 redundant and all, but yes, you have two mods that are, that are, that are able to get screens up, but also it is an absolutely terrible pick in the end because you have three psychic types. On a team, you only need one psychic type. I'm sorry, that's my personal opinion, but to have three mm -hmm. psychic types on the one team is absolutely redundant. Like, if he did not draft Klefki, I thought Orbea would have been a phenomenal pick for him. Um, mainly because it did give him more screen settings. It would have been, it would have been awesome pick if he did not have the if he if if he not a Celebi or and Clefable. I mean Klefki. No, Klefki and or uh, Celebi. I mean Celebi or Celebi. Celebi, he's a Celebi yeah. so. Celebi or Klefki. If he didn't have those two on his team, or be over to Final, I'm sure he would have had a duplicate typing with Alakazam. Yeah. But fair enough. That's you can have two. Fair yeah. enough. Yes, but having uh, or Beetle, Klefki, and Alakazam all on the same team, his team does not want to take a knockoff. It just doesn't. No. Um, a fa fast hitting knockoff. And, and sure, you do have. Like I said before, I saw this team. I was like, all right, he doesn't want to take a bug type hit. It still doesn't. This is Orbital is just neutral to it. Um, yeah. I will say Orbital in itself has great setup moves with Iron Defense and stuff like that. It can be a great setup mine to sweep a team. But on this team, it just seems very awkward having both Celebi and Alexam and Orbital. But then also Klefki and Orbital do a lot of similar things with setting up screens and just being that type of nuisance. So I think he might need to make some changes here to his team because uh, I'm not really liking it either. Yeah. But with a 77 pick, we have Hitmontop picked up an absolute, absolutely sniping someone else on the team. They <laughs> required the, the Hitmontop. The team. I but, loved this pick. I've never had the opportunity. Every time I did a draft like years ago, I've always wanted to draft Hitmontop. I never yeah. had the opportunity because someone always drafted it early. Yeah. I'm so glad it stuck around for this long. It gave me exactly what I needed. Uh, I needed more hazard removal. Uh, I wanted a rapid spinner. I wanted a bulky fighting type on my team. And um, that also adds the intimidate factor and also priority mm -hmm. with mock punch. Mm -hmm. It's such a phenomenal Pokemon. I cannot great coverage moves. Uh, like you said, uh, does get the mock punch, does get fake out, um, yep. rapid spin. Uh, this one, the assault fast is going to eat up hits relatively well. Yeah. Um, and, and the just... intimidate court you have is absolutely awesome with him on top and crocodile. Just the, just you mm -hmm. can base you can basically recycle intimidate. Yep. It's so, so good. I'm so happy to be able to draft this thing. Yep. I think it pairs very, especially very well with Espeon. I think these two are going to be a very good core together um, to make sure that I do never have hazards on my field. Oh, never. yes, for sure. <laughs> that is and my goal. And also in saying that, so with Espeon having access to Wish, you can just heal up him on top. Mm -hmm. Easy. Easy, easy, you, easy. Because you can swap in, get the Intimidate off, Espeon, Wish, another Intimidate, Wish, another Intimidate, Wish, another Intimidate. Like... Like, like, if you can find a way to to play around Wish and, and Intimidate users, no one is bringing a physical attacker uh, against you again. Nope. Never, ever, ever. It's going to be nice. I cannot wait to use it. Moving on to the 78th pick, we have uh, BBK drafting Nine Tails, getting that, getting that Sun team for the Charizard here, which is good. But at the same time, he adding a third fire type. And adding a Pokemon that does not want to take a ground type hit. No. Um, it, sure, he has two flying types. Two and flying he types, also so, I mean, has that... the grassy surge as well. But it's yeah, that, so it the makes grassy it up surge, a little bit. But... Yes, but the grassy surge only stops three like ground type moves. What, what is it? Dig, bulldoze, earthquake. Yeah, so stop me tantrum. Yes, uh, stop me tantrum. High, high horsepower. 
earth power. Exactly. Any of those, then you're just like, crap. Yeah. Um, like I like Ninetales as a Pokemon to pair with the Charizard. Um, pair with Cinderace, get the Power Ball stronger. Um, Rillaboom if it wants to run. I don't know if Rillaboom gets Solar Blade, but it might. Um, I, I think it pairs well with some of his individual mons, but as an overall for his team, yes. I don't feel like Ninetales works yeah. very well. At the same um, time, if you didn't, if you if if you did not have Cinderace, it'd be better. Yes, if you didn't have Cinderace, it's just having the two Flying fire types on the ground. Yep. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of it. But with that being said, let's move on to the 79th pick here with uh with with Mobok. with the new star Ronaldo being picked up. The new more bulk. Alright. Yes. Um I so, like Corvanite. Yeah. It gives him a ground immunity, which she desperately needed on this team. Like insanely. But the problem is it's a Pokemon that's not resistant to his fighting type weakness. It's gonna pair well with the Vaporeon and uh that's being neutral to it because it's a steel type. I I love Corvanite. I do. I think it's my one of mine, but I don't think this is the team for Corbinite. No, no chance. Because what? Because what you look at? You you look at it. If he's to face someone that does not have the land timer ability, he has a Malmetal, Chansey, Reuniclus, Vaporeon, and a Corbinite. Like in saying that, he is going to win, but it is going to be the worst twenty minutes of his life. Yeah. It's, it's, he's, that's the worst he's, part. If he's not playing land, land timer, he's going to timer for much every single game. Yes, this exactly. This team is so bulky. Yes, exactly. And well, that might be a strategy. And might be a strategy. Been saying that. But once players learn to work around it, he's going to screw himself over because be, because he does not have ways to play differently than, than what he's drafted other than, other than if he runs choice items on all of his mods. Yeah. Like, I agree. Like he's trying to get the Mel Metal in to just sweep. That's his only game plan so far. From what yeah. I'm seeing. Watch we'll see how the rest of the draft goes, see if he picks up anything else to that's yeah. strictly better. Yeah, but with the fourth last wheel pick, we have a uh, Palatine picked up by High here. I think this is a phenomenal pick for him. It gives him a guarantee immunity to electro type hitch, which I think he desperately needed. Yes. Um it gives him another stealth rocker so he doesn't have to rely on Jirachi for that. It gives him um, priority ice shard. Um, this an EV light user is great. The only problem that I'm seeing on his team right now is he doesn't want to take knockoffs as well. Because, uh, that's the biggest thing when you're adding an EV light Pokemon to your team. You've got to watch out for those knockoffs. And his only real resistances to it are Urshifu and Sylveon. Yep. So, and Urshifu is normally not wanting to take a knockoff because you don't want to lose the item off of Urshifu. So, Sylveon's your best Pokemon to take a knockoff. Exactly, yes. That's but, not yeah. ideal. So, hopefully he finds something else, but overall, Piles by itself, I've been using yeah. the Piles by PCL. I think it's phenomenal. I think yeah. with Eevee Light, Thick Fat, it will eat up hits four days, and the hits that he needs to eat up on his team. So, because yeah. he did was having a bit of a, um, with Tangrowth and Noivern, he was like, oh, hey, ice typing, but you have so much cover for those, for yeah. those ice type hits. Uh, Tangrowth, yeah, uh, yeah, go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Move, 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 moving on to the 81st pick, the second wheel pick. Uh, getting Snow Likes here. Now, another mod that does not want to take a knockoff. No. Um, and another Pokemon that Pilots Finds Snow Likes can't really be paired well together because they're both weak to fighting typing. Um, so you have to watch out for that. Um, but Snow Likes in itself, a very good mod, very hard to deal with, on, especially on the special side. If it does start to set up with like a belly drum set, you better watch out. This thing can sweep you because how bulky it is. Like a Resto Chesto Snorlax set is terrifying. Um, so it could be useful on his team. I'm curious to see how he builds around it. Um, it doesn't really help with some of his weaknesses. It just adds a little bit more. But see how it goes. I mean, it does help him cover his ghost weakness because he did have quite a few mons that didn't really want to take ghost type hits from like a gengar shadow ball was going to be a big issue for him um snorlax does cover that so we'll see how he plays with snorlax uh, going forward yeah but uh moving to the 80, 80 second pick we have uh frost has been picked up by shuasu 
Frost last year, it's lackluster, I'll say. Okay, so fighting weakness. Go perfect. On. Perfect, yeah, perfect. It's fine. But, Got uh, that covered. Awesome. You have another ghost type that. Yeah. But. <laughs> Another knockoff Pokemon. Mm. Another Pokemon that's gonna get hit ne- get hit with a knockoff, and it's gonna suck. Like, it's not bulk at all. Granted, a lot of times they're gonna run Focus Sash on this, just like, because they want the little one hit. Like basically, uh, Frostlass is known for fo- Focus Sash ninety five percent of the time, and its moveset's being like Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Spikes, Willow, or Destiny Bond. All that, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it, it can hit relatively hard. Um, but at the same time, if he's bringing Destiny Bond with a 110 base speed Mon, where he has a Trick Room team possibility, probably not smartest bring also most weeks. If, yeah, like his team is... going to bring Trick Room. It is his fastest Pokemon on his team now, um, I believe, outside the Zoroark. No, it's actually faster than the Zoroark. So, this is his fastest Pokemon at 110. Um, like, it, it can do some work. Um, but I'm not sure if it was the again the correct pick because he is still missing something that doesn't want to take that knockoff hit. We're st- yeah. I'm still waiting for that. Exactly. So the 83rd pick here, we have Seismic Toad from BBK. Uh, gets a uh, gives him a water immunity, gives him a stealth rocker. This pair is very well for his team. I yeah. love this pick. It finishes his Firewater Grass Core yeah. with Rillaboom, Cinderace, and Seismitoad. Gives him an electric immunity with his three flying types. Yeah. Gives him um, a Water Absorber immunity, and he has so much uh, coverage with Ninetales, Charizard, Hallucia, Toxtricity, yeah. and Rillaboom. Yeah. The one all, thing I will um, say is uh, grass paired with Rain, it leaves it open to a Solar Beam very easily. It does. It, um, I mean, paired with Sun. No, um, that's, um, it's tied up late. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. I know it's late for you. Uh, we're trying to finish it's this not, up. So, uh, um, it's that is very end. true. Uh, <laughs> that, for you, it's like you pause enough for a while. Um, but uh, that is very true. But it does give him another rock setter. Um, actually, his only rock setter. He might need to pick another rock setter <laughs> um, <laughs> on his team. I'm just looking at that. Yeah, this is his first yeah, rock is. setter. Is, yes. He got the draft. Yeah. Um, so I love Sizem Toad. I especially love his shiny form, but um, yeah. I'm curious to see how he works with it. But it does cover a lot of weaknesses for him very well, and all his main weakness being grass, he has five Pokemon that can cover it. So I think Sizem yeah. Toad is a perfect pick for that him. That is true, also, yeah. But so moving on, we have a Scolopede uh, picked up by Absolute here. Now, Scolopede is a perfect pick here. It's Speed Boost, Swords Dance, uh, just, I get Iron Defense. I get uh, yes. I get protect. I cannot baton pass any of my stats. No. That is the only thing. I can't baton my baton pass my speed boost or anything like that. But um, if I can start setting up behind the substitute with Iron Defenses or Sword Dances, I am going to sweep teams with this thing. This thing has great coverage moves. Um, bug and Poison are two typings. I already had a Poison type. I didn't have a Bug type yet. Um, this makes it so that I don't have to deal with Fighting type weaknesses at all because I resist that very very well. Um, and once I get a speed boost off, I'm going to outspeed a lot of things relatively easily. Oh, yeah. Um, so it just, it gave me amazing speed coverage, which I needed for this team. Um, and it gives me, uh, toxic spike setters. Um, uh, I believe, I don't know if it gets regular spikes or not. Um, it doesn't do but, it. But, uh, it does. It does. It gets spikes and toxic spikes. Okay. Um, so it just gives me more hazards I can lay down if I want to. Um, I think this mod is just phenomenal. Yeah. I think it paired very well for this team. I was so glad to suck around because I was, it was, I was getting to the point where there was only like four mods I really wanted left and I wanted to make sure they were all here and yeah. Scallopy was one of them and I'm really glad I stuck awesome. around. It, I, this thing is going to be a problem for a lot of teams. Yeah. Well, with the 85th pick here, we have, uh, we have, a uh, Pierce picking up Umbreon here. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. He needed this for his team because oh, for he sure. had so many psychic types. Oh, he yes. brought in something that was going to eat up those knockoffs, those dark type hits, so well with Umbreon. Yeah. I thought this was a phenomenal pick. I don't know if he planned this out or if it was just how it just everything aligned, but picking up Umbreon here, I thought was phenomenal. It does give him again oh, a Pokemon that's weak to yes. bug. He needs to deal with his bug type weakness. Yeah. 
However, it did it, cover his Dark Knight two weakness yeah. very, very well because yeah. this is gonna be able, it does hits much better than Cinnabar can. Exactly, uh, and it also gives him a, another wish user as well, which is perfect. Which mm-hmm. is good. It helps him gain back health, but in saying that, he needs to, he needs to cover the bug type, and let's hope and let's hope he can do it in the, in the next round. That's hopeful. Let's hope. Moving on to the eighty six pick, we have Zach picking up Heracross. Now Heracross, I love in this format. Heracross in this format, paired with Porygon Z, are two of the mods that are best paired in the format together, because uh, because just their move pool hit everything possible. Yeah, phenomenal move set. Hits hard as a truck. Does get Moxie boost. Guts this as well. Very, which it is insane. Guts and it, oh. it the um the actual uh. Uh, like cover like the weaknesses that this Heracross has is covered by this entire team. Oh yeah, like this sure. is a phenomenal pickup for him at, at late game. I think this is a value pick. I think that he's gonna choice scarf Heracross is going to destroy teams. Yep. And in and and in saying that also he can also run a he can also run Tailwind with it, uh, mm-hmm. and then run Guts on the Heracross. Yep. Either way, like it, he has such great coverage with his entire team and ways of building around this Heracross to help this Heracross sweep. This, this draft is definitely looking terrifying. Yeah, for sure. Moving on to the 87th pick with myself picking up Aromatisse. Now, this is an amazing pick for my team because it provides me with a Trick Room Setter as well, extra one. Mm-hmm. It brings you a, cl- uh, a Cleric as well with Aromatherapy, and yeah. I believe it gets Wish. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's not the most ideal fairy type because it's not the bulkiest thing in the world, but um, it does provide you with a really good cleric move pool, and like you said, does set up the trick room for your relatively slow team if you don't want to bring Pelipper in the rain. Yeah. Um, so if you want to bring more of a bulkier team that's uh, that's gonna be slower, this Pokemon's great. I I was honestly Aromatisse was one of those months where it's always without shine by Pokemon like Florges. Uh, Gardevoir, stuff like that, but with a lot of fairy types that were in older generations that aren't here, Aromatis is going to probably have a chance to sign this generation. Oh, yes, for sure. Like, uh, just from testing with it, uh, I'm, I'm loving the mod so far. Like, it is like it is better than I expected, to be honest, I'll admit. But yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, with uh, 88 pick, we have uh, Lycanroc Dust being picked up by Lord and this was an interesting pick. Um, Excel Rock uh, from a Lycan Rock Dusk is very hard to deal with. Yeah. Um, you got to make sure you have that rock weakness, rock resistance, or you're not going to want to take that hit. Ooh, yes. Um, and I, it does give him another Pokemon that's on the ground, um, that doesn't want to take an earthquake, and he only has one thing so far, and that's Mana Buzz, that is one to take an earth that like he doesn't have anything that wants to take an earthquake. Besides Mana Buzz. So I feel like he needs to pick something else up to pair with this because he Earthquakes are just going to wreck his team oh, um, once sure. that Mana Buzz is gone. Exactly. So, um, but I, I like the pick for the team. It's a great speed tier, um, very hard hitting. Does give him another Stealth Rock user, so he doesn't always have to bring it with Rhyperior. Um, so I, I like like Rod Dusk a lot. I just hope he picks up another Flyer or a Levitating Mon or something to be able to eat up the uh, ground yeah, hits. For sure. So next up with the 89th pick, uh, we have Rotom Fan picked up by Aaron here, which is honestly decent pick for this team. Like gives him yeah. gives him a ground weakness, but in saying that also it is also immunity, immunity, ground um, immunity. Uh, yeah, immunity. Yeah, but also it is hindering him because he's picked up a flying type and a levitate user in one. Mhm. Which is bad. So fair, but also stops guaranteeing. No mold breaker against his Rotom fan because it is it's still also. a flying type. But at the same, so time, it, at the same time, you look at how many mold breakers there are in the game. There's what, two drafted so far? Uh, at least two, if not three. Yeah. So um, it, It's a fine pick. I mean, it's not the best of the Rotom forms. I mean, it's not Rotom Frost, which I think is the worst. Yeah. Um, but I think personally, I probably would have maybe picked up a regular Rotom over this, personally. But... Uh, uh, I can definitely. I I would not have because the fact that he already has two ghost types. 
That's fair. Um, that's totally fair. But um, the flying typing is going to give him some good coverage here, so he doesn't have to rely on making Savali flying. Um, so that is giving him uh, a flyer. It does give him another defogger. It does give him some like hazard removal or something like that to pair well with his team. So it's a fine mine. It's only six points, so it's not the greatest in the world, but it's a decent late round pick where you're trying to fill out the rest of your team. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so moving on to the 90th pick here, we have 11 nine tails picked up by Looney. I'm very confused by this pick. Like, I feel like he only picked it for Aurora Veil. Vale. Oh, for sure. 100%. But the problem is that he also has Torkoal. So he has Hale and Sun being run on the same team. Yeah. A little awkward. Like, uh, it is weird, but at the same time, I feel like he has only drafted it for the Aurora Veil. Vale. That is it. And then to also yeah. have the and then to also have the uh, Ice ability, because he has three Fairy types now. Yeah, having, like... I. Having, he should have picked up. Yes. He should have picked Vanillix. Vanillix yes, would have been a better option. Yes, exactly. Because having two is perfect, but having three is over the top. Yeah, and he does not. He only has one steel type in Age of Slash. The rest of his team does not really want it. And Venusaur can somewhat eat up poison type hits, but for the most part, uh, like strong poison types are going to destroy this team. Um, like hard hitting, fast poison types like Toxicity are going to do a number to this team once the Age of Slash is gone. So, yeah, uh, I definitely feel like Vanillix, if he wanted the Aurora Veil, uh, Vanillix is probably a better option. Yeah, but I mean, Little Night Tails is still a phenomenal Pokemon, like, exactly, like yeah. nothing against it. I just think this is an awkward team for it to be on. Yeah. So, with the pick, the, the other with the other with wheel pick, he's going for Porygon Z. Now, like I said earlier, Porygon Z, perfect, he gets adaptability. That try attack is just perfect against anything that's not a steel type or a, or a ghost. ghost type like it is perfect like uh, porygon z in the format and even it's move pool with uh surf ice beam uh thunderbolt, thunderbolt. Like, it is perfect like uh porygon z is a, a good pick up here by looney it makes up mm -hmm. for that questionable a little over nine tails pick but uh i'm looking forward to see where his last two picks go because uh it's looking average so I'm hoping to yeah, take it, so I'm hoping very take average, it from average team. to a better than average team right now. Yeah, it's a very average team. It's not bad, but it's not like great. There are some really yes. good, like powerful teams. This is on like everything works well together. We'll see how it goes. Like yeah. you could have a really good season or it could just not go well in this favor. It's exactly. going to be a 50 50 shot. So hopefully these last two months can help break that balance. Yeah. So uh, pick 92, we have Necrozma picked up by Aaron here now. Necrozma. Mm. The Krosma just explains itself. Like, why like with its ability pr pr Prism Armor, it just it just takes I think three quarters of a super of a super effective attack. So it takes one point two five damage and just. Oh. It's very good as someone who I've used Necrozma in the past, oh, yes, and I, I would yeah. I was not honestly that impressed with it. Um, it felt like a lot of times you either were a like a lead like Stealth Rock bulky set, or you were a setup mod. And it was sort of very predictable what your Necrozma was going to be based off of what the matchup was. Um, so people were able to plan around it relatively well. Um, one of the best things to deal with this are like um, like ways of getting rid of your stat boost. Because a lot of times they're going to be running Iron Defenses or Calm Mines, but anything like Haze or anything like that, able to or Clear Smog, able to get rid of the, uh, the, the stat boost, sort of makes Necrozma average at best. So... It's a great value pick for him here at this late in the draft, um, but I don't think it's the greatest like psychic type. Yeah, exactly. So, but so next up we have pick ninety three. Uh, pick picked up a lord with a uh, Rosa Raid being picked up here now. Gives him the like cross type, gives him the poison type, and just works well for his team. I'd say works works well for his team. Gives for the him, typing wise, to fit yeah. with the team, I agree. Yep, and it also gives him that ninety speed range as well, which, which is awesome. Does mm -hmm. not does not create too much of a speed gap. Nope, he definitely covered his speed. The only thing, again, it is perfectly does not want to take a ground type hit. He yeah. needs to find something to cover that ground type weakness because yeah. you cannot rely on mana buzz for that. You need something else. Everything else, like the stuff that you would think resist it, like Scizor or Roserade, 
they don't they're neutral to it so you yeah, gotta exactly. watch out for that and so unless you pick something up something like excadrill or crocodile or um any f- hard hitting fast ground type is going to wreck this team mm. hit say so you need to pick something else up here yeah i'm for sure yeah exactly but uh so, Speaking of way to ground. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Dreadnought picked up by myself. But yeah, it is it is way to ground, but at the same time, Dreadnought, Dreadnought has that uh, swift mobility, which helps it. It also gets, it also gets uh, Shell Armor to help against the two Earth uh, Shivers, which are guaranteed, and to also help against Kingdra, which gets that sniper ability. So... The only thing that I probably have with Dreadnought is without G-Maxing Dreadnought, I don't think it's as good. I don't think it's that great. I, will, um, I, will, I it think isn't, th- it isn't, I will admit. But at the same time, it still has potential. It has potential, yes. Being a Swiss form with a Pelipper can be useful. Um, it's just you've got to make sure it's brought into the right matchups because being four times weak to grass, if anything is able to outspeed it, because it's not that fast. Even with double speed, it's not that fast. So if something is able to outspeed it with like a toy scarf, even if it is max speed, jolly nature in the rain, there are plenty of Pokemon with like a toy scarf or something that can still outspeed it. And if they hit you with a grass type move, you're just dead. <laughs> um, yeah. Or a ground type move, and exactly. you're just dead. So, and your team, besides the Bronzong and the Pelipper, sort of like previous teams, don't want to take a lot of ground type hits. So you've got to really rely on hope that. The speed will make up for this dreadnought. It's pretty much what it is. But he also, I believe he gets stealth rock, so this could just be bulky stealth rock lead, just hazard setter, and that's totally fine. And that's a totally good place for dreadnought to be. So um, I think dreadnought is a fine pick. It's not amazing, but it's not bad in any way. Oh yeah, for sure. But moving on to the ninety fifth pick here, we have uh, Galarian Mister Mime. I love this draft till now. I don't understand this pick. <laughs> Yeah. I I honestly don't Provides understand Provides him with a mind. ghost and psychic type so I do see why he's drafted it for sure like I see exactly why he's drafted it like uh, Lamus Mime I don't have enough to know about Mr. Mime at all but I do but I'm pretty sure he gets dual, dual, dual screens which is possibly the idea behind it to add screens it- with Rotom as well it does get dual screens. It gets um, like energy ball, gets uh, freeze dry, gets nasty plot, um, stopping tantrum, thunderbolt, triple axle. Like, and it is a base one hundred base one hundred speed tier, which uh, does fit into his team relatively well. But it's base ninety attack. I mean, special wise with an EV light, it could possibly eat up a hit with a ninety special defense, but. Yeah. I don't know. Just it seemed like a very awkward pick. I mean, it's only three points. It is very low on the board. Um, but I feel like there was probably a better options he could have chose here, personally. Yeah. So for sure. But uh, next up with the ninety-six pick, we have Eleven Raichu picking up uh, the forms here with the two picks in a row. We have Eleven Raichu picked up by Pierce, the ninety-six pick. This was an interesting pick. Um, definitely gave him a, no, a very fast mana pair with, but it's a fourth psychic type. Yes, that is one thing I don't understand in the team. Fourth psychic type, and it's like, why? Why, why, like, why? I really want to ask Pierce, or I hope he does a uh, a video for this explaining why uh, he picks up four psychic types. I think he was going to try and upload. I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, we'll but, find out. We'll yeah, find out. But, uh, um, but, uh, but uh, so I was talking to someone. Uh, somebody played Pierce in the uh, off season, and they were like, "Got oh, Pierce. He, uh, uh, he's he's talented. He's good battler." But I'm having a hard time to believe that when I see four psychic types on a team. He's probably a good battler. I I'm just questioning what his mindset was to drafting four psychic types. Like, yes. why not draft regular? Regular Raichu. If you wanted that fast electric type, yeah. draft regular Raichu. Yes. Not yeah. a Lolan Raichu. Yeah. Because <laughs> because exactly because because now he has to draft Pink Urchin. Yeah, he has to. Uh, that's just to get that speed tearing, and yeah. it also again he doesn't have a Pokemon that wants to eat up ground type hits. He doesn't. Like ground destroys this entire team besides like Ludicolo and Celebi. 
Like yeah. those are the only two Pokemon that might want to eat a ground type hit. No one else wants to eat a ground type hit, and that's really not good. It's gonna hinder him a lot. It, it is. Betty, it's gonna hinder him a lot, yes. and I'm Betty has two ground like right. Crocodile wrecks this team. I'm, yes. I I don't want to post my my boy Crocodile, <laughs> but Crocodile wrecks this team. Like, yeah, bro. Uh, but let's but let's see what last week's had. So remember to the 97th pick uh, with absolute picking up Talonflame here. Now Talonflame. Yeah. Going down over the years, but but it was still a powerhouse mom. Like Talonflame can still hit hard, wreck teams, and just sort of absolutely take lives with the Gale when, Wings activating when full health. When Gale Wings got nerfed, Talonflame dropped, and it wasn't as good. However, a particular item came out in Gen Eight that made Talonflame back up to being a very average to above average mod, and that's heavy duty boots. Able to come in and guarantee not taking any hits from Stealth Rocks makes Talon Flame so good because then you always guarantee you get at least one Brave Bird off, one Tailwind, one Defog every single time, one Roost if you want to go for it for some odd reason. Um, but Talon Flame is such a phenomenal mod for that reason. I think, excuse me, I think I needed a fire typing on my team, I didn't have a fire type yet. Um, I already had a flying typing of Skarmory, but my electric weakness, I have covered. <laughs> like, yeah, do, yeah. I'm not worried about my electric weakness at all. The only thing I was worried about my uh, was a rock type weakness, because this and Hitmontop, I mean, this and Skullipede are my only Pokemon that are weak to rock. Um, I have plenty of Pokemon that are at least neutral or resistant to rock, and yeah. I've pl- I made sure I was planning on picking up Talonflame, that's why I picked up Espeon and Hitmontop. Because I wanted ways to guarantee... I was going to try to pick up Charizard at one point, but then I got drafted, and I was like, that's fine. Um, I wanted to make sure I had hazard coverage so that I don't always have to feel like I have to bring heavy duty boots to my talent plane. Yeah. Um, but I think it's great for this team. It gives me a very hard-hitting fast Pokemon yeah. that can... Um, exactly. Ironically enough, it has the same attack stat as Amoongus, for yeah. some odd reason. Uh, um, and I would even say that it is better than Charizard, so you've, uh, so you've, so you've lucked out over... Over being picked. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. But moving on to the 98 pick, we have a uh, BBK picking up Crawdon here. Now, picking up I... two water types in a row after having a Sun Team. I don't understand this pick. Like, I love I love Crawdon. I do. Yes. But it's like, slow. Yes. Because I understand why he's picked it, because with a Sun Team, you won't want to bring Grass types, but so your Ground types are free to then come in, but they don't realize that most Fire types get access to Solar Beam. Yeah. So I mean, the move pool on this thing is really good. It is. Um, and, it does get Knock Off, which you needed on this team, but and, it's also... It's... Yes, and you also get Adaptability as well. Adaptability Aqua Jet and uh, yeah. like a choice band Adaptability Aqua Jet can do a really good number uh, on a Pokemon. Problem is, you're not gonna bring rain for that particular reason. I don't know. It, this was a weird pick. Um, I can understand the Seismitoad pick. The Crawdon immediately afterwards, I was a little questionable on. Um, I like to see what he does with Crawdon because he's it's just duplicate typing in water and dark. So it's a weird one, but we'll just have to see how he does with it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Exactly. But moving on to the 99th pick is uh, Shuasu picking up Whimsicott here. Now, picking up another semi-bulky, but a uh, mon that's used to stall, essentially. Um, I would not call Whimsicott bulky at all. Oh, um, it, 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 it can take dragon hits, so it is bulky. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. It can take a dragon hit, yes. Um, It doesn't want to take a knockoff because it's based... 60 HP and 85 defense. I don't know if we really want to take too much of a knockoff. Um, they take one, but and it does. It is resistant to fighting, I guess, for his team. But a lot of fighting types and dark types get poison jab, which this thing does not want to take. Um, this thing does get tailwind to get some of his mods to go faster than everyone else. So that's something. Um, Prankster is it a phenomenal ability? I. Tr- I really do like this Pokemon a lot. It was the reason why I got banned in VGC Series Six was because of how good it was. Um, but I don't know if this is the right mod for him. I'm, no, I'm questioning this one. The, this draft is really weird. <laughs> yes, but I will say he has gone for a lot of high high point picks because I'm pretty because I'm pretty sure that this is the end of his draft, so he does not have any more picks to go. 
So this is gotcha. his final. So this is his final draft. Ian, what are your final thoughts on this draft? Uh, he has a lot of weaknesses that I'm a little concerned about. Um, Pokemon like uh, um, Terrakion or um, any of the Urshifus, like especially Urshifu Single Strike. Honestly, Close Combat, Wicked Blow, Poison, Poison Jab, jab. And, and then, Thunder Punch. Yeah, done. Sort destroys of. this done. entire team. Yep. Like it, yeah. I'm I'm not exactly sure like what his mindset was. I feel like he needs to make some free agency picks, um, uh, to change yeah. some of his Pokemon around. Hopefully, sure. but I mean, I like some of his Pokemon, and Whimsicott is now his fastest Pokemon on his team. Um, I can get set up Tailwind and stuff like that, but uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on it. I need to see how well. I don't know. Like I don't know most of these uh, play, battlers, yeah. so I don't know if this is his play style. Yeah. Um. But I definitely am going to see him going to uh, going to timer a lot. Yeah. Well, with the th- if he's flying timer. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the wheel pick here, we are high picking up Hitmonchan here with the with the 100th pick, 21 picks to go. Yeah, this seems fine. This is a totally fine pick it for his team. Yeah, for sure. It fits um, in well. It uh, it gives the elemental punches. It gives the iron fist ability to be able to to be able to back those uh, elemental punches, but it also but also gives rapid spin. Rapid spin is like rapid spin. perfect, perfect for it. Uh, that's what he needed. He needed a. Uh, no, everyone had defog. Other than that, he needed a way of getting rid of hazards. And yeah. him on top being gone, him on Chan was the next best option. Um, oh yeah. Just with how many points he might have left, I thought him on Chan was great. I thought it was a really good pickup for him. Um, we'll have to see how well it goes for his team. But assault vest him on Chan can do some work. Definitely yes, can. Sure. Can yes. So with the other wheel pick from high, he's gone for the Raichu, the regular Raichu. The... This is perfect. He needed the speed yes, tier here. He, did, he yes. desperately needed this fast electric type to really pair for with his team. Um, I thought this uh, this thing gets knockoffs, this thing gets fake out. Um, it gets Volt Switch, which a uh, nice switching out priority for his team. Um, I thought Raichu was a perfect pick for him. I thought Himachan and Raichu as a wheel pick near the end was phenomenal. I thought that was really good on his part. Yes, for sure, yes. So with 102nd pick, we have... Uh, no, it's sure she has uh, done with the draft. We have Shuckle picked up by BBK here. I have nothing to say about Shuckle because I have nothing ever to say about Shuckle. It, it gets sticky webs. It gets stealth rocks. It's an yes. annoying bulky threat. It gets like, it's just, it's too much bulk. Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just an annoyance. Shuckle's it's a mod that's just... Shuckle's a mod that's there, but when it's there... It's there, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, it's a mon that's like, it's a mon that, it's a mon that's not a threat, but it's a threat if you don't prep for it, sort of thing. Pretty much, yeah. Like, it's one of those tricky like if, you do, if you don't bring water coverage for this team, yeah, before the shuckle, yeah. she, <laughs> good luck beating it. Yeah, exactly. So move, move, moving to the hundred and fourth pick, we have Mill Take being. Being picked up by Absolute, which is honestly perfect. Mill Tank, Stealth Rocker, Milk Drink, Hill Bell, Base 100 Speed Potential, and he's just a th- thick fat as well. And he's just an all round. Thick fat, scrappy, excellent sap zipper. Scrappy as well, yes. Like, like Mill Tank is a perfect one, and to pick it up late draft as well is honestly perfect for him. Like, Yeah, I was honestly surprised it lasted this long because this thing is phenomenal. Um, like you said, thick fat, scrappy, sap zipper, three amazing abilities that I can bring. And no one knows what's going to be every single week. Um, gets amazing move coverage. It gets milk drink. Um, gets stealth rocks. Uh, it's um, the stats on them are perfectly fine. Base eighty attack. Base one hundred five defense. Base ninety five HP and base one hundred speed. I wanted that base one hundred speed here because I wanted to make sure that uh, Pokemon are, uh, base one hundreds are not speed creeping. Yeah. Um, so it, this Pokemon's great. Amazing move pull. Um, I really wanted this. Bulky, because uh, I did not have anything to really eat up ghost type hits very relatively well yeah. on the team yet. Um, Crocodile could, but other than that, I didn't really have anything. So not having a mill tank here, being immune to ghost typing, definitely covered a uh, bit of a ghost type because I have with the Espeon yeah. and no real resistances. So uh, I love mill tank. I think it's great. I think it's going to fit really well yeah. on this team. And now, and and now this is also your last pick of your draft. So yep. from my opinion on this. This, this this draft is really well balanced, really really well built. It's honestly, it's honestly one of it's honestly one it's honestly in the, in the top five I would say for drafts 
in the league so out of, out of 10 top five for sure 100 could be top three if i have a look if i have a, if i have a proper look at all of them in depth sort of thing but yeah but uh from looks of it now it's just absolutely amazing uh it has potential to to be versatile there's uh there are mons that can play multiple roles which is good to see and all in all you have done really really good well to draft a ro- uh, well-rounded team in the end which is good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thank you. So, moving on to the 105th pick, we have Pierce picking up Mudsdale here. Uh, phenomenal. I thought this yes. pick was great. Yes. I, I hate this Pokemon. Down. I hate facing against it because it's so bulky. It's so hard to deal with. Yes. But this gives him a massive uh, re- immunity to Electro-type, which was going to be a problem for his team a little bit. Yes. Um, it... This stops knockoffs because no one wants to knock off a Mudsdale because it just gives them a, uh, a stamina boost. Yeah. So I think Mudsdale is a great pickup for him. It's slow, which this team is already like having a mixture of slow and fast. Does get stealth rocks. Um, it, it, this Pokemon is just great. I, I think this is a phenomenal pickup for him. This definitely fixed a lot of his issues. I felt like he had on his team. Yeah, exactly. But it's moving on to 106 pick is uh, which actually Zach finished it with on the glare and Mister Mime. So. What are your thoughts from the draft there? Um, minus the glare, Mr. Mime, I thought his draft was great. Uh, definitely one of the top three drafts, in my opinion, uh, outside of the glare, Mr. Mime. The, I'm sure he'll do something great with Mr. Mime that I'll see, and he'll be like, oh, hey, that's amazing. Um, but it's his team is great. Uh, great sand, cover, uh, sand team with Gigalith and Extra Drill. Um, I wish he was able to grab maybe one or two mods that benefit more in the sand as well, so he doesn't always have to rely on Extra Drill. Something like Sand Slash or a little bit of Trio or something like that would have been really nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, he has great cores with Extra Drill, Clefable, Hydreigon, and Rotom Heat, Decidueye, and Teleon. Um, I think his bulk isn't all there. I think he's going to be a little bit... Uh, more offensive than he is bulky. I would um, say that this team suits a 20 minute timer better than uh, than Lane. 100. percent 100. percent This is a 20 minute timer team yes. because he can be offensive and get in there when he needs to be. Yeah. Great wall breakers yeah. just to break yeah. down these walls yeah. so you don't have to go timer. Exactly. And as long as he takes down more ones than his opponent, he's sorted and set. So exactly. Moving on to the 107th pick here, we have myself picking up Sir Fetch here. Now, I really like Surfetch. Okay, so Surfetch, I fell in love with ever since Preston used it last season. Although, although it was Dynamax, so he was able to get up the Max Airstream, Max, Max Knuckle. But still, it is just the mod that I've wanted to use ever since then, and I'm looking forward to using it. It, it gets Scrappy, Defog as well. Just, oh, I can't, I can't wait to use it. Base 135 attack is phenomenal for this yes. thing. Um, it has really good bulk in its defense, most of its HP is a little lackluster, but that means it can eat up hits relatively well. Being a yes. pure fighting type, you don't have a lot of weaknesses. Um, yep. It's first impression, iron defense, knockoff, yep. um, sword stand setup, um, brave bird, yep. like I said, defog. It, Mon's great. Um, it, it is slow, which again sort of pairs well with your like rain slash trick room team you're trying to build here. Yeah. Um, Cause this thing in the trick room is going to destroy things. If this yeah. thing has a choice band in a trick room, good luck. <laughs> choice, choice band. And also if it holds the leak as well. Oh yeah. A, a leak with this thing is just, it's, it's going to yeah, destroy. Exactly. Like once you have that scrappy ability, like you're never, probably never going to run set fast. It's probably always going to be scrappy. So yeah. it's, it's a great mod. I think it fits your team very well. So we get a uh, pick one away coming up here. Uh, is Swoobat picked up by Lord here? Now, Swoobat, awesome one. Simple. Simple simple as in the ability. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It did the one thing that I've been asking for him this entire draft. Yeah. Another Pokemon not weak to ground, or that yeah. can actually take it, that's immune to ground. Exactly. Um, it's It does give him another electric weakness, but he has some decent coverage uh, with some of his mods to be able to eat up those hits with Jolteon or Hyperior. Um, but I think this thing does get Hurricane, so if he does want to try to set up with the rain, maybe, I don't know if Comfy can learn Rain Dance, but, um, with him once they do want to learn Rain Dance, uh, Swoobat with a Hurricane can do really good work, but like you said, simple, um, with this thing can do a lot of disgusting work, and people are not going to be able to, uh, prepare for this thing very well. It's, uh, it's going to be terrifying, so I think it's phenomenal, it's exactly what Lord XD needed. Yep, exactly, so, let me look at... Okay, so next up we have Trapinch on Aaron's team for the for the one hundred ninth pick. So when he drafted this, I thought this was just 
because we needed to draft something just yeah. to get the draft going. Uh, I didn't realize this was an actual pick until afterwards. <laughs> so I was like, oh. Uh, this is a no-end Pokemon with Arena Trap. Um, it's going to be hard to deal with. And that's, uh, it. And that's and the reason why he's drafted it for the Arena Trap 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's the only reason why you, he wants to arena trap something that's going to be a threat and then yep. endeavor it and kill it. <laughs> like, that's pretty right. much his goal, um, which is totally a fair strategy. I mean, that's just something you have to watch out for. So you, if you want, if you know he's going to try to bring Trapeze on something, you need, like, one of my biggest concerns when I go against him is him bringing Trapeze against my Zeraora. Yes, and you being like, I have to find a fist, yes, something. So I have to find a way to get around that so that I'm not dealing with the Zero, uh, losing my Zero Aura to this Trap Inch. So um, I think Trap Inch is a great pick. Um, it's definitely... Wor- I'm glad he waited to the last round to pick it up because if he picked it up any earlier, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because no one's going to draft this. Yeah. So, so I think I think it was great. It was a very good uh, job on his part. So, so what's your thought on the final team that he has drafted you? It's interesting. Um, it's going to be a very hard team to prep for. Yes. As someone who's been trying to prep for it, it's a very hard team to prep for. You don't know exactly what he's going to be doing. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of versatile mods in Silvali. In Dragapult's versatile can be physical or special. He has Ditto. He has Necrozma. He has Trap Inch. He has Glaring and Weezing, whether it's going to be Levitate or Neutralizing Gas. Um, he has a lot of really like versatile mods. That you, it's so hard to be like, all right, well, if he does this, I have to prep for this. If he does this... I can't prep for this way. It's like you really have to play mind games with yourself trying to figure out the best way to build this team. Um, sure. Is it the most? Is it the greatest team ever? No. There's definitely probably some holes in there that I haven't seen yet. Uh, but overall, I think it's going to be an interesting team. And it's just, I think his goal here uh, that's really going to help him out is people not able to prep for the right thing. Yeah, for sure. So and that's going to benefit him. Yeah. 110th pick here. We have Looney picking up Bolton. Bolton, uh, uh, see, with Bolton, it is a physical electric attacker that doesn't get physical moves. Now it's also a Pokemon that doesn't want to take a ground type hit. Oh, yes, uh, that also, yes. Uh, like, 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 it gets competitive, but same time, its special attack is absolutely booty. Yeah, I, d- I don't understand the Bolton pick, like, <laughs> um, like you said, his, his base attack and special attack are both 90. So, um, he does get Flame Charge, he does get Fire Fang, he gets Nuzzle, which is an awful move, but he does get Thunder Slash. He's going to be a mixed attacker a lot of the time, because um, yes. like I said, his attack and special attack are both 90. He's base 121 speed, which does give him a nice speed tearing for his team. Um, does get Strong Jaw, which be- uh, boosts up some of his Fang moves, like yes. um, Fire Fang and Psychic Fangs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he does get Wild Charge, so he does get some physical uh, electric moves and Wild mm-hmm. Charge. Um, so he'll be a fine pick, but I don't think it was the correct pick just because your only Pokemon that's going to want to take a ground type hit on this team is the Flygon. Yes, exactly. Because it's, yeah, but if, if you bring a Molebreaker like Molebreaker Extra Drill, it's going to sort of wreck this team. Yeah. Sorry to say. Uh, so so. Moving on to the uh, 111th pick here. Uh, with the... it's, it's him again. It's, yes, it it's is. It's the wheel pick with him with Maractus. Now Maractus here, basically he's drafted it for the, for the, uh, for the water absorb. No other reason. That's it. Water absorb yeah, and I mean, spikes maybe. Uh, water absorb spikes and it is a Pokemon that can theoretically somewhat take a grass a ground type hit because it's just neutrally grass. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's it's so not that's, yeah. weak. It's not weak. To, it's not poison. Uh, so it's not neutral to it. So it, at least is resistant to it. I don't know how often he's going to bring it. He might bring it against like a, the Dracovish matchup or something he, like that. Uh, um, he will bring it against uh, myself with Rain. He'll bring he'll bring against uh, Pierce with Rain, uh, Lord, uh, and then yeah, that's it. Just yes, just uh, just the three teams that the benefit from Rain, and yep, also it's... maybe the team that has a Scythe Toad and thing on it. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what he, how he works with this mine. I think it does cover some of the stuff he needed on his team, but not as well as we were hoping. Um I think a mod that probably would have been better than both of these is probably Rotom Mo. Probably yeah. would have been perfectly fine. Yeah. Um but uh that's just neither here nor there. I think this Pokemon's fine for a one point pickup at the end. It is, yes. It's 
it won't be the best Pokemon in the world, but it's not going to be like it's not going to be a detrimental to his team. Exactly. So thoughts on the final team right here? Um, his team is good. Um, I do. It, it's awkward at times, but I don't think it's the worst team out of all of them. I like the Mute Age Slash. The the top three picks, Mute Age Slash Strikeon, are terrifying Pokemon to deal with. They are yeah. such amazing Pokemon. Um, Torkoal Venusaur is a great pairing up together. Uh, Flygon is a threat. Uh, Porygon Z is a threat. Alola Ninetales is getting up with Aurora Veil is a threat. Um, Azumarill can be a threat depending on if it's a setup set. Like he has a lot of threats. I'm curious to see how he's going to synergize those threats together. Is my whole thing. Well, yeah, like, exactly. The only real synergizing is Torkoal Venusaur. Other than that, I want to see how he synergizes them with the rest of his team. Um, outside of that, I think the team is going to be fine. Oh yeah, I mean, exactly. like. So, okay. so next up we have uh, Aaron's done. We've already done him. So next up we have we have Clefairy ending. Uh, we have Ward ending it with Clefairy with a hundred with one hundred thirteen pick. Fine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he was running out of low on points. I don't know if there was any other uh, anything else he could have picked up in this at this point. Um, it's another. It does similar things that Comfy does with a lot of like cleric stuff and stuff like that. With uh, wish and stuff like that so it's a it's a mini clefable that can eat up hits um he doesn't really have a rock uh a uh knockoff weakness per se on his team yeah um i mean there are a couple months like swoobat doesn't want to take it um but then he has urshifu that's resisted mana blood that resisted it um yeah comfy that resists it so like he has ways of dealing with the uh, with the knockoff here. So mm. Clefairy's fine. Late, but, uh, yeah. Last pick, it's fine. Oh well, yeah. Uh, well, I would say it's pretty last pick because it provides him with a rocket. It provides him with a cleric. It, it provides him with wear shield bow and all that stuff. So essentially, it provides him the extra support that he didn't need, but is glad that he now has. Yeah, it, it's good. a that's a great way of putting it. He didn't need it, but he's gonna be glad he has it. Yeah. So are there any final thoughts on the team here? Um, very good team. Um, very, uh, sort of, I feel like it's very similar to mine where they have a lot of good coverage for it, itself. It's a very well-balanced team for the most part. Um, yeah. picking up the Swoobat, I think was definitely what he needed because he needed that Pokemon to get through that ground, we massive ground weakness that he had, yeah. uh, to pair with the Mana Buzz. So he doesn't always have to bring Mana Buzz every single week. Um, yeah. but it's a fine team. Um, I would I'll like to see what he does with it. It's sort of like similar to a couple of other teams where the synergy is a little weird because you have yeah. Pokemon like Jolteon and Kingdra that mm. ben, uh, the benefit in rain, like and Scizor the benefit in rain, but you don't have the rain. Yeah. So I'm curious to see if he does bring some rain dance Pokemon stuff like that to try to bring the rain and see what he can do there. But yeah. I think his team is good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he plays with it. it yeah. A lot of these teams just come down to how good they are at battling and prepping. Exactly, yeah. So next up with the so. 114 pick, we have myself. Finally picking up a, a grass type in the end, and also a rapid spinner in Audi Gus with the 114 pick. Uh, definitely picked up what you need. Um, you definitely needed a grass typing, and a rapid spinner was very, very good for you. Um, so you didn't have that before. No. Um, and you really only had a couple Pokemon that were able to get rid of hazards. Uh, um, three others. I've uh, Vol Volcarona, Fetched, and Pelly. Yeah. So, and all of them didn't really, besides Sir Fetch, like, Palapur and Wilgrona didn't want to come out yeah, on, exactly. on the hazards. So, yeah. having Eldegoss there as another Pokemon to come in and get rid of rocks so you don't always have to rely on Sir Fetch to defog away yeah. is very good. Having yeah. a, 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 an okay grass type uh, pairs well for that. Oh, yeah. So. Well, so, with Eldegoss, uh, Moop, Moop, Moop wasn't the best, but it is basically just a Mon that sort of sits there and gets that leech shade, rapid spins, and sort of swaps out essentially. So, it is good. Uh, but it, it does also, the same thing every time. But it also gets the ability regenerator. That's fair. Um, it so, is a which bulky is good. grass type regenerator. Yes. Um, it just it's going to be very predictable what's going to do. It's going to do yeah, the same sure. thing exactly. mostly yes. every time. So exactly, it's not yes. that versatile. So people are going to be able to prep it for very well. But it's pure yeah. grass, which is nice. You don't have to worry about like a bug or poison for like any other like weaknesses or anything. So it's fine. It's a your, your draft overall is good. Um, with pairing it with the Pelipper and stuff like that, it does benefit in your rain. Yeah. I'm not sure how fast Eldegoss is, um, 60, but it's not that. I think I want to say. If it's that low, um, then it pairs well with your Trick Room sort of. Uh, yeah. uh, Eldegoss, yeah, 60 base speed. 
Um, and 120 special defense, so it's going to be able to eat up some special hits relatively well. Mm-hmm. 90 defense, 80 special attack. So, I mean, it yeah. can do some things. Um, the move pool is very lackluster, but it's a cleric. Yeah. With aromatherapy. Um, pairs really well in trick room uh, with the aromatis and your bronzong. So you have two trick room setters, which is really, really good for yourself. Yeah. Um, I think it's a fine pick. Uh, I think your draft overall is, is good. Um, it definitely, you're sort of having two different teams built. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the times so you have your rain team, but they also have your trick room team. Yeah. Um, so people just can sort of predict which one's coming because some of the Pokemon aren't going to benefit in the other. Like Bear Scoot yeah. is not going to come in your trick room team, while something like uh, Aromatisse might not come in your rain team or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's sort of like you, you sort of got to predict, okay, which side is he bringing, his rain team or his trick room team? And that's sort of what's going to either going to benefit you really well if they predict wrong or might punish you if they predict correctly. So yeah. so moving on with the 115 pick, Zach is skipped. So we have the 116 pick here with Pierce picking up Cobalion. I love Mudsdale. He ruined it with Cobalion for me. Uh, how so? <laughs> Another ground type weakness. Yeah, true, yes. I'd have had a like, he does not have a single flyer on this entire team. His only oh, thing that really not. wants to eat up... He has a Levitating and Celebi, and Ludicolo is a Grass Pokemon that's going to resist the hit. Other than that, his entire team, Earthquake yeah. just destroys. Like, and bruh. Also like, Orbital can. Yes. Nah, but... And, and, so, and so. What he has two grass types, he has three water types, he has three psychic types, he has two, he has two steel types. He has a lot of duplicate typings, yes. and honestly, like for his uh, knockoff weakness that he was having with all the psychic types, Kabalion's great because they're justified. Yeah, stopping people from justifying you, uh, it's gonna stop people from wanting to go for knockoff because they're justified. However, extra drill wrecks this team. Crocodile wrecks this team. Terrakion, I mean, can wreck this team. Tyranitar can wreck this team. Like, there's so many Pokemon that are just hard-hitting Pokemon that if they can learn Earthquake, yeah. dude. Or they learn Earthquake and Knockoff, bruh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or something to hit the Celebi with. Like, it's... Yeah, like, uh, <sighs> yeah, like he's going to rely on the Dracovish a lot here to get yes. the kills. Like, Dracovish, yes. like, Dracovish is going to be his kill leader here by far. Oh yeah, Dracovish is going to be one of the top kill leaders in general. Um, but it's going to be his best Pokemon on his team, I feel like. And I feel like it's going to come to bite him in the butt because people are going to prep really well for that Dracovish, and that's going to not go well for him. Yeah, so, exactly. I would like it, like he's one of the Pokemon I would like, one of the people I like to see make some free agency pickups yeah. um, and drop a couple of these mods and pick up something that flies. <laughs> For the yeah, exactly. Pick up something that flies, and then your draft is so much better. Yeah. You just have something that flies. Get rid of Klefki and pick up a flyer. Yep. So with Please. A, yep. So skipping oh, absolutely number one seventeen, we, we we're going to one eighteen pick here with uh Brick Breaking Crocodiles picking up the Cloister. I love Cloister. I think it's a great pickup yes. here. Oh, um, excellent. excellent late game pickup here for sure. It's exactly what he needed on this team. He did not have a water type yet, besides Seismitoad. Um, yeah. So he wanted more offensive water typing. He did not have... Well, we had Crawdon, but I'm, this is more offensive than Crawdon, is my opinion, because of Shell, uh, Shell Smash is such an amazing ability. Um, sorry, move, move to use. Um, Ice, such a great uh, typing here. I think this thing can be relatively bulky as well. Um, I, I think Closer is just a phenomenal pick up here. I think it's much better than Shuckle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, much better than Crawdon. Like, this is the best pickup since Seismitoad. Like, this, the last two pickups, all three of those are closer. Like, I'm so glad you picked up Cloyster. I'm so glad. <laughs> so, final thoughts on this second last team here. Um, it's good. Um, I'm not gonna say it's the best team here because it's very offensive for the most part. Mm. Um, he's definitely gonna benefit being in the twenty uh twenty minute timer because he's gonna be just breaking walls relatively easily. Um, but the problem is he doesn't have much bulk to eat up those hits. Mm. Um, so. If he if his Pokemon, let's say Cinderace can't just like like Tyranitar, if Tyranitar is set up right, it can wreck this team relatively easily just because it can eat up the hits and then dish them out relatively easily. 
Yeah. Um, Pokemon like that, where it's just like, it's very hard for him to deal with because they're so bulky and he can't eat up bulky. He can't eat up his very well on the team. Mm -hmm. some, of his some of his team does have natural bulk to it, but not enough to justify being a defensive response to his mom besides Togekiss and Seismitoad. That's pretty much it. And Shuckle, but it, Shuckle, I'm not impressed by Shuckle. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So at, in 20 minute timer, this team is going to be great. Um, in land mode, uh, probably not so much. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, um, so moving on with the last bit of the draft as we're skipping uh, Shurasu, uh, we go, we're going to high with his last pick as Weezy. I like it. I yeah. think this pick is great. Uh, levitating Mon. The, but the it, only problem I have with Weezing being Levitate is the fact that it does not get rid of T-Spikes. That is very true. It is not a grounded poison type, so it does not get yes. rid of T-Spikes. That, yes, um, that's the one thing that I hate about the Weezing is the fact that they do not get rid of T-Spikes. That's totally fair. Um, but with the fact that he has Jirachi um, to have a Pokemon that can come in and not care about T-Spikes, I think it's totally yeah. fine. Um, I think this is must be to what he needed on his team because besides the Noivern, he didn't really have anything that wanted to eat up ground type hits relatively well. So yeah. like we saw with a few other teams. And I think he picked up a mod that definitely helped with that coverage with Weezing being a levitate. Yeah. Sure. A mold breaker Pokemon like Extra Drill will do work against Weezing, but um you're not all you only go against that one a week, not every single week. Yeah. So I think having a bulky Weezing here, setting up toxic spikes, um, just being a nuisance with Will-O-Wisp, uh, Flamethrower, stuff like that. Uh, really annoying for fairy types out there, which uh, Weezing is a good wall for Sylveon. He has Sylveon. So I think this, I think Weezing is a good value pick at the, at the end of the draft. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so overall, uh, so what's your final thought on, the, on, on this team to end it all? I like this team. This is probably one of the better teams that are on here, I think. Um... I think covered his weaknesses very, very well. Um, he has a good mixture of walls and offense. I think the Urshifu, Single Strike, Noivern, um, Chandelure, uh, and Raichu are great wall breakers. Just hit really, really hard. Um, Jirachi can be pretty much anything you want to be, so he has that nice versatility, but he doesn't have to rely on Jirachi always being like a stealth rocker or anything like that because he has things like Palace Wine. Mm. Um, doesn't have to be a cleric because he has Raichu uh, that can be, I think, Raichu on his wish. I think, I think so, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, cool. And then I think it's just, I think his team is overall really good at keeping coverage. I think he just has to watch out for um, one thing I'm seeing on his team right now that he probably doesn't want to deal with is like Mamoswine can do a number to this team. Um, especially if Urshifu single strike goes down, yeah. Mam like a Twist Scarf Mamoswine can do work to this team yeah. um, if he predicts correctly. So I think something like that might be an issue. But overall, I think his uh, he'll be fine. I think his team is very, very good. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so to end the draft here, I want you to give me your best team out of everyone here. And you can't say yourself as an easy cop out. <laughs> Damn it. Um... Huh, that's a tough one. Um, let me relook at everyone's team real quick. So, well, so while you're doing that, I will say mine. So I will say for the 20-minute timer, I'm going to go for Zach. Zach's team is the best for the 20-minute timer. But outside of that, he will be hindering himself. But, and, but to go for the land timer, I, I, I would have to say that yours is probably one of the best there from what I can see from like a quick sort of look. I would, well, I would say that yours is you. one of the best there for sure. Um, I will, when it comes to land timer, um, when it comes to, um, 20 minute timer, I'll definitely say BBKs. Mm -hmm. I think his is probably the best for a uh, 20 minute timer, just because of how offensive his team can be. Yep. Um, and how, uh, just like how much of a wall breaker with having Kalucha and Cinderace and Toxtricity and Charizard in the sign. Um, mm -hmm. I think his team is going to be relatively hard to deal with when it comes to land timer. Um... Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. I think it's sort of pretty much might be the uh, Fort Wayne Durant. 
to high. Okay, yeah. See that? I, th I think highs is the best uh, so and when you. it comes to lane timers. If I can't choose myself, I definitely think it's, uh, think yeah, it's highs because okay. his team is just so versatile of what it can set up with. Um, and the fact that it uh, has he covered his weaknesses relatively well, um, his team is going to be able to make some really good yeah. pivots when it needs to. Um, having sticky webs with the Rackwinded, having a really good bulky Pokemon with Tangro setting up Bleach Seas, Noivern with U turn, Jirashi with U turn. Mm. Um, I wish he had a Volt, I mean, he does have Volt Switch with Raichu. Um, and like he just is able to deal with everything that he has issues with. I feel like he's, he has a Pokemon that can deal with it. So yeah. I think, um, High's team is probably the best team when it comes to Land Timer. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I, I will add, uh, I want to say a massive thank you to Wylander for making these slides, uh, or designing them, not making them, designing them. Just, just, this, 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 this boy kills it every time. I will, I will leave his, I will leave his link down and down in the description below, as well as all of the coaches, uh, YouTubes and Twitters that I, that I have access to. So please go check them out. Please sub to them. Please watch their content because their draft analysis will be going live at 5 p.m. CST on Monday and and the week one battles will be going live on Tuesday, 5 p.m. CST. Then from then on, every week after that, every battle will be will be uploaded at 5 p.m. CST every every Monday from then on. But that being said, make sure you check out Absolute in the in the in the description below. He he has been absolute G today. He has taken <laughs> he's taken three and a half hours out of his time to come and help me do this. So I just, so I just want to say a massive thank you to you, Absolute, and thank you for joining me. I appreciate you having me. You uh you have a good one. It's gonna be a good season. Thank Hopefully you. uh we'll see how everything goes. Exactly. Well, well. With that being said, guys, this, this has been the boy from Land Down Land Down Under, Gemma Nine Nine Nine. Signing off and peace.